You're listening to Mark of the Maker. Hey everybody, I'm Mark Steiner and you're listening to Mark of the Maker. And this is episode 48 of the show and this one, we're going to call it Send Off Picks. And we'll explain what that means in a few minutes. Um... Should be a fun one, another one of our picks episodes like we've done in the past. This one's a little different twist, and uh, we'll go there in a couple minutes. But let's make sure we got everybody here with us. We have uh, Mr. Tom Krein. Hey, guys. I'm here. And we have Mr. Sean Kendrick. Insert opening to Riddle of Steel by Elder here. Yeah, nice. Ooh. And then we have Mr. Michael Birch. Uh, uh, here. Here. <laughs> oh, it's back just to own it man hell yeah back to school time he's getting his back to school game on this, those first day of school jitters coming out in his voice I think now it'd be more of a <laughs> <laughs> muffled by the mask baby mm-hmm. alright so we're going to get into our uh, main episode here in a couple minutes but we're going to First, let's talk about Blade Show, right? So Blade Show got canceled. They moved it once. It uh, ended up being canceled. I think maybe one or two of us were going to go kind of on the fence. A couple of us were not planning to because all the stuff going on. But it ultimately ended up getting canceled. Maybe not really much of a surprise that it got canceled. It'd be hard to deal with that many people and the whole social distancing requirements and all that with a bunch of tables and stuff, right? Well, I mean, have you ever stood in line just for ticketing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They don't have enough space to be able to do that with any crowd that rabbit right that he would even remotely resemble what it normally would look like. No, mm-hmm. hell no. So, so that ends up we've seen it already. Uh, a bunch of makers who had stuff that they were kind of prepping for, like they normally would every year, seasonal prep for Blade Show. And so we've had a bunch of different folks that have had uh, sales and other stuff. I know Les George was just doing some stuff maybe yesterday over the or over the last week um, with some of his knives for the show. Or what would have been knives for the show? What, what are you guys doing? I, Michael, you had a bunch of knives in the works, right? And kind of deciding what to do with them? Uh, Yeah, I think I, I needed to have, you know, with no shows, you know, sometimes you need a little bit of extra motivation, a little deadline, you know. So I made myself, you know, have a deadline and did a kind of a virtual show, big air quotes there. You know, and I, I was trying to think of stuff that was like, could bring excitement to it and all that stuff. But then you realize, well, you know, the online lotteries are just very easy. You know, I wanted to have like a live, you know, drawing or do it there. But then people are all over the world, different time zones, different work schedules. So it ended up just kind of being a, a group of knives. I, I've got five like today of recording that are, you know, that I did. But I even set up like a table and did my, you know, the the cloth over it and my little sign like I usually have then put a fluorescent light over it. And then I was like, damn, that looks horrible. So, <laughs> the, the knives look great. Thanks man. They do but it, yeah. getting that stuff out kind of made me a little, uh, a little sad. Just kind of like, Oh shit. Kind of reminder of, you know, the shows we're missing right now. Yeah. Right. I've, I've been pretty bummed with no shows. It's honestly one of the highlights of the year for me. It gets to you. It, and it's, you know, it's August, which is, Kind of crazy. I know that's cliche to be like, oh, time's flying. Then. But damn, man. Yeah. Right? It, re- it really is going by fast, right? I mean, Blade Show would have been, at this point, almost two months ago. Yeah. Which is really weird to think about. Yeah. Because, you know, over the years, it kind of becomes this, uh, I don't know, this sort of timeline thing, right? Blade Show is kind of dead nuts in the middle of the year or real close to it. And I don't know. We're past that already. Almost two months past it. Yeah, it'd be like, it's like our, you know, old school Equinox or whatever, whatever you need to <laughs> to measure time. This is, you know, right. Blade Show is a, a point in time that you know something's coming, you know, people be starting getting ready for the gathering now, you know, if it wasn't Big time. canceled too. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Man, I mean, it's just odd. I mean, for at least 20 years, Blade Show's been a, you know, mark on my calendar that I'd work oh, yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. It's a, yeah. Have you guys heard anything about New York yet? Uh, nothing, but I don't, I don't, I don't foresee, you know? Yeah. 
and shit that, you know, some places can't go into New York right now. You know, some states <clears throat> call Florida and stuff, you know, so that's right. kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I, it doesn't seem very likely, but. But keep an eye on their website. So yeah, we don't know. It's their yeah. call and between right. them and the venue and the, probably the city and. So, yeah, it's definitely interesting times. We super weird year not getting to see your pals, right? We that's a big yeah. piece of it and I think between you know uh like a TKI early in the year um we used to do some show or another, right? There were a, a few of them kind of in that March-ish time frame, so like first quarter end of the first quarter thing, Blade in June, middle of the year, gathering like three quarters of the year New York kind of sort of winding it out it's yeah yeah it's <laughs> time crazy. to plant time to harvest <laughs> like you said right it's like we kind of get accustomed to that schedule and it's weird when it's not there well i was just talking to someone this morning they're like you know the uh, you know, i haven't done like i used to do like my uh halloween knife i haven't done it in a few years yeah he's like yeah that's coming up soon i'm like shit it is <laughs> right yeah you know month, we've already tried to half, think two of, months away how, how do we you know, the holiday stuff We're, we've been talking about that. And, you know, how do we do Halloween? How do we do, you know, with all this weird shit going on? Yeah. Well, Crazy year, man. Yeah. And until, until there's the reality of the show scene coming back, I think it will be interesting to see what it looks like when it does come back. That's going to be a very interesting twist to see unfold. Mm -hmm. And then in the meantime, you know what I mean? What do makers decide to do? Cause I mean, kind of to your thing, right? Okay. You used to do the Halloween knife and that was kind of a very specific thing, but maybe, you know, until shows are a thing again, um, and maybe in a slightly different form, who knows, maybe you end up doing, um, more of those kind of specialty milestone during the year kind of projects or something. Or something oh like yeah. That. Yeah. You need something to click on, you know, to, to keep that clock kind of in your mind, you know, to have something to look forward to something to, in my mind, I want something for the customers to look forward to, too, because it's, sure. it's not just me wanting to see my friends. It's customers wanting to have a point where they know they can save money up for this to have a knife, you know, or whatever it may be. So it's like it's trying to not entertain, but also keep customers, you know, engaged and part of, you know, whatever. And I was talking to some of the show people and stuff, and it's like they... I think are also kind of a bit worried about, you know, the big shows. You don't want those moving to small shows, you know, which we kind of saw the micro show explode the past few years. You know, this is also a, you know, a way those could also grow a little bit. And, you know, the big shows don't want to see that happen too much, you know, because it's, you know, kind of an industry standard. Yeah. We were definitely at a time where there was room for everything, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. There was room for micro shows and there was room for traditional big shows like Blade or Gathering. And I, I think I can't imagine that those will go away anytime soon. But like I said, I, it oh, will no. be interesting to see what unfolds. And I, I'm i sure um, the folks that run those are just kind of scratching their heads about it too, right? Because even when well, this thing's kind of done, I don't even know what that looks like, right? <laughs> I don't even, no. Does this really go back to what it was or... Does it, do the, the fact that people have been away from shows for a while hurt the ability to have a big giant show, that kind of stuff. It's yeah. a very interesting twist. And I think that's why they're doing like blade shows doing like where they've been lately, you know, with the memories and stuff. Yep. They had a, a thing on Instagram that hashtag blade show memories, um, where they asked people to post their pictures with their friends and people they met or special moments at blade show. And yeah, it, it's really cool, right? It's, like you said, it's a little bit weird because it's like, oh man, it's kind of sad that you're going to look at some of these pictures, right? Because it reminds you that you're not doing the fun stuff that you wanted to do. But at the same time, it is kind of a cool way to reflect a little bit on some stuff that, you know, like I posted that picture of uh, of us with, uh, where the four of us were all with David Boy last year. There's no way that we would have ever done that without a sh big show like Blade, right? To have all four of right. us in one yeah. spot with a guy yeah. like David Boy, that, that's an impossibility without something like Blade Show. No, it's it's yeah. a big part of the industry. It's, it, even if for some reason, I don't know, that I didn't want to sell knives, I don't know why that would happen, but I would still want to go just for the fact that all my friends are there. You know, it's it's a big part of it too. One place where you get to see everybody usually. 
Yeah, we did, we kind of did the math, and this would this would have been the thirty first show I've been to in a row at Blade. Wow. So, yeah, pretty crazy. It is weird. It is weird. So, for those of you who haven't check out that hashtag on Instagram, hashtag Blade Show Memories is pretty cool. They have a bunch of them that have been posted or shared with them or sent to them or whatever. And I think they're planning on showing those over the next couple months just to kind of, <laughs> I guess, help people not forget about Blade Show, right? Or remind people that it is a really fun thing and we should all be looking forward to next year. And fingers crossed we, that show can take place again. Um, so if you have a cool picture of someone that, you know, um, someone who is an inspiration or a maker that you really are fond of that you finally got to meet or you know, some people that you met at Blade Show that ended up becoming great friends. That's a super common theme in the show world. Um, I should go ahead and share them on, on Instagram and put that hashtag on there. Blade Show people will see them and, you know, maybe they'll share it on out there. So kind of a fun thing. Yeah. So, Michael, you're doing this virtual show. So by the time this airs, that show will be done. Um, I know you have some other stuff going on as well, but... Sean, are you doing anything? I knew you weren't making knives for Blade Show anyway, but do you have any kind of stuff you're doing in lieu of whatever was happening for shows or other things this year? Mm -mm. Nah, I got five pieces I'm working on. It's pretty much like I normally would be working. Yeah. I'm just keeping on, keeping on. Yep. Because I'm lazy. <laughs> and we just, you know, we're not sure how school's going to start. And I don't know, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, I'll be home with the kids while she's teaching. I don't know, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to also prepare a little bit for, you know, a little bit of lag. So I, I may end up being a, a night crawler. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. That's the, also the shitty part about it. Right. Right. Well, and I mean, as, as crummy as that is, um, in your case, that whole situation is even more complicated for lots of families that have two working oh, parents that can't work at home. Right. I'm, I'm very lucky that I have the ability to, it's going to suck, but I can, you know, do the kids, you know, have the kids stuff at, during the day for school, virtual learning or whatever they end up having to do, but have the ability to work at night. You know, it's, it's an impossible reality for a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. Yep. On all sides of it, you know, no matter what the schools end up doing. So, Yeah. What about you, Tom? Are you doing any um, specific stuff kind of in Luo shows or just kind of keeping the heat poured to it and making stuff and selling it kind of on a normal cadence? Right now, I don't have anything planned. I'm just kind of, I've been working a lot on orders, trying to get caught up on some of those. Um, we're building a few. We, we put stuff up in the group just about weekly. Um, but as far as something specific, no, we're, we're, we're talking about it because really one of the main times I build folders is for shows. Um, so we may, and I've, it's funny. I've got stuff on the bench still from last blade show. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't build folders a lot during the year and I literally have two, I have a folder area and I've got two folders that are still, you know, 80% done from blade show last year or, Maybe not Blade Show, but New York or something. So we we may do a few folders. I'm trying to get where we can work folders in right now. I'm mean, even having some work done on the shop while we're doing this. There's an electrician in the back wiring up the, the last third of the shop that we're doing. I just got drywall put up and all that. So he's back there putting lights up, so hopefully he won't make too much noise. But uh, <laughs> Or turn off the power. Well, once, once we have that back done, I've got a Bridgeport mill that I've never used. Literally, I bought it probably 10 years ago, had it all re-scraped, rebuilt, and it's just been sitting there because I don't have, I didn't have a space to set it up and now we'll have power and all that. So I'm looking forward to that and, uh, we're set doing a specific heat treat area. So I'm, I'm looking forward to start doing some folder work and playing around a little bit. So maybe, maybe that's how we kick it off a little bit for, uh one of, you know, the lack of shows. Right. To be fair, my virtual show is just like your Tuesday. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't say that you've got five really amazing folders and I haven't made any folders in 
Thank you. I haven't made a folder in almost all year, basically. So, but I've got a few on the bench and I just got to kick them off and, uh, folders still intimidate me a little bit. Um, and they take me a lot longer than they should. So I think, um, one of the things that's interesting, Michael was talking earlier about, um, where he was thinking about doing this as a live thing. You know, one of the common complaints on social media is, especially when the show season is in full effect, right? Is, oh, there's all these wonderful knives for the show. What about knives for us online? It's like, well, boom, they're for people that go to shows. That's how this works, right? The, that's kind of a slug of knives. Every time a maker goes to a show, that's a thing. Um, welcome to the party. Right. But, you know, okay, so if you do it as uh, like, like Michael's doing it, right, where it's a series of online lotteries, that's cool because it opens it up to lots of entries, which is nice. Um, mm-hmm. And it gives people an opportunity no matter what time zone they're in or whether or not they can travel because, you know, he's not traveling. I'm not sure. You know, we're, a bunch of us are not traveling during this whole thing, right? So right. Um, at least by choice. So I do think the live thing is a really fun thing. People really seem to enjoy the whole live video thing, right? And I think it would be cool to do something like that. Um, and I know, Tom, you do that stuff a lot. Maybe I know you were doing it like weekly or whatever for a while, right? Yeah, I haven't done any in a while because I'll be honest, I've been kind of burnt out on everything too, just like everyone else, and I need to try to pick up my game a little bit on that. Yeah. Would, do you have any advice for Michael if he decides to do a Facebook Live thing and do something like that? Because I, I, I wouldn't even know where to start with it. I, I know there's like a process you go through and get the video rolling, but... If, if you got an iPhone, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. And, I just hate their stupid face. Uh, same. I hate your face too, but... Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bam! Just, kid, just kidding. Just <laughs> kidding. No, it's... If you've got an iPhone and you can set up a computer, there will be a little bit of lag, but you can do, you know, it's easier to do that way and you can get the questions and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty straightforward. I... I'll probably still end up doing some of that just to, cause I, I really do when I do like a, uh, like a happy hour type of thing. I don't know. It's something that gets it like, uh, Oh, we're the feeling of whatever and do a, a knife drawing in that or something. Dude, you could like chug an Irish car bomb. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to blade it. it uh, that is true. It's the bad kind of flashback. The awkwardness of everyone just waiting for me to slowly drink that. <laughs> Dude, the, that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, Jens and Jesper, Jesper especially, like, I don't know where he put it. It just disappeared. And then he was talking trash. Like, What's it feel like to be girls, boys? <laughs> that yeah, is was crazy. stuck and burned into my brain and probably Burnley's too. <laughs> A lot of practice there. Oh, well, I was still drink trying to chug my beer as he said that to me. <laughs> it was uh, it was rough. It was an Irish car bomb, but it was the size of a beer. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, ain't an Irish car bomb a shot of whiskey and a pint? Yep. Well, we had, uh, what did we have? I don't know. It was like way bigger than what it was supposed to be. I don't know. And I, I don't drink, so I'm sitting there talking. I was talking with Michael afterwards, and literally you could watch the alcohol absorb into his body. <laughs> so, my, so my eyes just go. <laughs> it was crazy. Good times at Blade. It was the towards the end of the night. There had already been many consumed oh, yeah. at that point. Yeah. Toward the end of the night is a special time in Atlanta, that time of year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's when you put your knives up. Yeah. If you're in the pit. Oh, yeah. I don't even take them down in the pit anymore. I, I quit that. Cause he's, mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. Uh-uh. uh-uh. I don't. They can disappear oh. real fast. Someone starts talking to me. Sorry, I dropped it. I didn't yeah. mean to. Yeah. Did you bring anything? Nope. You can see him tomorrow. Right now, it's drinking time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, and then they're like, okay. And they jet and leave you alone. Yes. <laughs> If that's how that happens, then I'm okay with that too. <laughs> right. Okay. We got any other kind of in lieu of Blade Show or other shows this year that we want to talk about? Well, I, I, I don't know. You know, everything's so, up in the air. Yeah. I don't think anything's happening. So, right. Right. Everybody's just kind of figuring it out as we go. Mm hmm. 
All right. So this thing is, uh, we called it Send Off Picks. So this is about, um, you know, the working title was Back to School Picks, but, you know, these days you bring a, kid brings a pocket knife to school, he's expelled and hanged in the town square or something. I, you know, it's like a whole different thing today than it, maybe it once was where kids <laughs> bring their new 22 rifle to school to show their pals or whatever. Um, so back to school picks maybe wasn't the right thing. And we thought that maybe it doesn't make sense. Um, cause this, these are also really cool picks for someone going to college or even just kind of leaving it heading off on their own, um, yeah. stuff that you might want to put in their pocket. Is that an accurate summary, Michael, of what we're talking about? Yeah. It's kind of the time of the year where some parents may be pushing their, you know, kid out into the wild to start their new life with an apartment or a job or, you know, start school and they may, you know, they may have a, you know, an apartment away from college or whatever. So there's some, some stuff we'd like to, you know, to give them some recommendations, well, even, maybe. Even if they live in the dorm, you can keep stuff in your car or whatever. I mean, that's, that's kind of oh. how I, how I did it and where I, my thought process was I'm sending my kid to college away from home or something like that, you know? Yeah. And it was just a fun exercise to kind of really look at very more reasonably priced knives and, you know, gear, you know, that you can kind of send them off because they may lose it. They may whatever. So it was a good exercise to be like, to kind of stay under that hundred dollar price range. Right. You know, because everything else is expensive as all get out anyway. Right. So why don't you describe the categories and the and the price thing and how it fits in? Well, we so we wanted to do like a folder under 100. We want to do like a multi-tool, you know, pretty universal, something to use and get out there. A flashlight, pretty important for about anybody with an apartment or a house or whatever. Um, and then sort of a bonus, something you think is necessary, you know, something you think is helpful or handy for anyone kind of starting their life out there on their own. Yeah. We just kind of, let's see what we got. Yeah. Cool. I agree. It was kind of a fun thing. The under a hundred thing was made it interesting. There's a lot of stuff out there for under a hundred bucks, right? There, that, really, there really is. I, at first I'm like, oh, that's going to be a hard limitation. Then it's like, no, there's, it's not really. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of good stuff out there. And in fact, some stuff that I actually own that's under a hundred that I didn't even think about that, you know what I mean? These are cool things that... Yeah. Um, are super not stuff used. I wanted, <laughs> you know, that I was like, shit, you know, I'm not a, I, I'm not a huge flashlight guy. I mean, I like, I may have bought some stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> but it's like, once I start looking at it, I'm not a flashlight guy because I try not to get in the flashlights. If that makes sense. I try not to, Yeah. I yeah. figure if I stay away from them and I, th cause I easily could get drawn into the flashlight world. I have a number of things that I have had varying degrees of of success in staying away from, right? <laughs> Where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, that sounds really cool. But, oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't want to touch that, <laughs> right? <laughs> I know how this will go. So I'm going to stay away from that thing. And sometimes I do. I'd say a lot of times I do. Every once in a while I falter and then find myself with some kind of weird new hobby of some form. It's EDC crack, man. You don't need to try it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. This is a really classic example of the whole, you know, we have a Randall episode and then between the crew, 10 more Randalls get bought off the market kind of thing. Or, you know what I mean? We, we need like our own Amazon affiliate link that, oh, that yeah, only yeah. we use and we'd still probably find a shocking amount of money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> do they still do affiliate links? I know that back in the podcast days, that was a big deal. Like a lot of the I early so. 2015s. Yeah. I think like, you too. Shit, man. We need <laughs> right? like some of these knife companies or knife uh, places to be like, get your stuff through Mark of the Maker. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about this. Um, send okay. off send off picks. Um, how do we want to do, do it? first? Want to do a category and then go around person yeah. by person and talk about that category? Yeah, I like Why that. Not? And then we'll get to the end and the last hour can be Tom talking about all of his extra categories that he didn't tell us about and made picks for. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I do. I do have like eight categories. <laughs> well, you know, uh, thinking about EDC spears because uh, right, uh, your kid may have to boar hunt, and uh, and I have backups. Right, backups for everything. You mean you guys didn't pick anything for the solar power category? Losers. <laughs> yeah, dorks. 
That's our slag on Tom moment for the show. All right, so let's. Uh, I mean, it's a knife show, so no, let's... we'll have another one. You can't say that's our moment, so <laughs> that, there'll be more to. That's come. a very fair point. That's the first time we hit Tom hard during the show, but that's fair. We'll we'll be back. Um, so let's talk about the first one. We're a knife show. Let's talk about uh, knife pick. So Tom, since you have a very long list, I know. Why don't you lead off the the conversation? What would you pick or send off your? Uh, kid or friend or nephew or godson or whatever, what would you pick? So, and this is something that I picked for my own kids when I sent them off, uh, or at least very close. My, my pick is a Swiss army knife cadet and Alox. Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. They're under 40 bucks. If you, you know, they're like 35 bucks. It's small drops in a pocket. It'll fit in skinny jeans. Uh, what? <laughs> Hey, I don't need it for the skinny jeans part, but it will fit, you know, it's, it's small and unobtrusive. And if you do pull it out in mixed company, it's not going to scare anyone. Yeah. If, if you have it in your pocket at college, it's no big deal, right? It's not a locking blade, but it'll cut stuff and open cans and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, the can opener is a big deal for, for me. Um, when I was in college, one of the things we really liked to do was um, camp and we were poor. So we took like cans of chili and crap like that, you know, shotgun and beans. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, it really is fun, you know, and some of the other picks go towards that too. But, you know, you grab a pack of hot dogs and some buns and some marshmallows and you can go out Mm -hmm. and have a good time and, and, uh, it's cheap and get some friends around and have fun around a fire scissors, man. Those, I, those are just so useful. So I, my my second would be the farmer X, which is the Alox, um, the, the Alox version and it has scissors. They finally added scissors to an Alox knife, but it's a lot bigger. So that's not what I went with. Farmer Um, X. It's yeah. It's called the farmer X and Alox and it, they, it has a saw and the scissors. Oh, nice. Farmer X sounds like some kind of uh, extreme sports event where they like do barrel rolls in a tractor or oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. have speed I mean, horseshoeing that. or something. I've yeah. got one. It's, it's a really Watch cool. It. They finally <laughs> did it. They finally put it together. I had a custom one made where somebody added scissors, but they never worked good because they modified the scissors to fit and they the spring didn't work. That's... Uh, not too far off from the super tanker. That that's one of my go tos is the super tanker because it's got the scissors. Yeah. It's got, you know, the, the stuff that appeals to me. You know, yeah. So I, huh. that, that's my pick. Uh, backup would be a Farmer X or like a GEC Viper, another not scary blade, and uh, I think a slip joint for college is a good 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 place to go. Yeah, I think you're gonna hear a few slip joint picks. So I think I, I don't know, man, I probably somewhere have maybe one of those um, Alox knives. Those are the ones that have the bumpy aluminum yeah. handles, right? Yep. So I I really like them. I actually got three or four of the classics in this week, the different colored ones. But I I love the Alox knives. They're, they're way strong. Mm-hmm. I've actually got another pick that's an Alox knife. Um, but if you haven't looked at them, they're a great value. Um, the plastic ones hold up fine. For me, I just like the solidness of the Alox. Yeah, that must be a thick one. That's got a whole bunch of tools in it. The Farmer X? Yeah. It's got three springs, so yeah. Okay. So Maybe it's got four, a but yeah. can opener, screwdriver, knife, saw, um, scissors, all cap lifter, Maybe like a little pry tool, or maybe that's another flat blade screwdriver. And the other skinny one is a Phillips, one yeah, of the kind of makeshift Phillips setups. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Their saws are amazing. Yeah, they really are the best. Interesting. I've never tried using a Swiss Army saw before. Oh, well, they actually they will, cut. Yeah, they will hurt. You just touch them, and you're like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Huh. All right. Sean, what was your uh, your knife pick for this um send off thing i went with a knife i actually gave to kane when he went off to college and i gave him a robin 2 in g10 by spider co it's from their bird series oh nice 
Yeah, man, it's a solid little knife. Uh, it's a lock back. It's small. It's what uh, almost not quite two and a half inch blade on it. It's inconspicuous, not really aggressive, and just a solid knife. I mean, when I actually got to handle it, you know, before I bought it at the knife shop, and I was impressed with how solid it felt for a knife in its size range and price category. Nice. Yeah, that's a solid pick, man. And it's a lock back. That's that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, a mid lock. Midlock, there you go. So it's got the right bird series. So it's got the funky kind of um, teardrop shaped hole yeah. in the blade. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, and I think you can you can get them for okay. The MSRP is forty nine, but I do not believe I paid that. I think I paid more, like thirty, maybe thirty two bucks. Right. Yeah, those look good. It's hard to go wrong with spider coat or bird. I mean, they're mm-hmm. they're great. Yeah, great products. So for people that might not be super familiar, Bird is kind of like their value line, right? Correct. Yeah. But I mean, dude, for the you would not think this knife was a value line knife. So it's high carbon. It probably is a, not a super hard to sharpen, right? Which is probably a good, uh, I don't know, aspect or, or uh, thing to consider for this kind of uh, pick. Oh, absolutely. Easy to maintain. Right. It's a good one. It's a good one. I like it. What about you, Birch? What did you pick for your send off knife pick? I got a few here, man. It, uh, uh-huh. yeah. Well, this one actually just got not discontinued, but it was uh, a Knife Joy exclusive. I sent this to you before, actually. Okay. Oh, okay. I know what you're going to say then. Yeah. They did a uh, Endura in a San Mai, like a VG10 Damascus. Yeah. You know, they did a special $99. <laughs> great it's deal. like yeah that w- yeah and i should have grabbed it but it's it's gone now when i looked um vg10 sand my for under 100 bucks yeah in a in a for a spider co and it's just like shit should have grabbed it but uh that something like that would be great you know just for one thing i think like damascus is more appealing to people these days just because of right you know the forge and fire and all that funky stuff you know it might be a a little bit of a conversation starter for someone who doesn't know what it is or, you know, when you pull that open to open a box or whatever, like, oh, you know, I don't know. It seems like it'd be an interesting one for a kid to have and picking up chicks, stuff like that. I got, well, you. I hate to say it, but in my head, when I was thinking of this, I was thinking of sending Cullen out and stuff. And it's like, I think if I wasn't handy, I'd probably be pretty single. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's the fact that it, <laughs> I could fix a few things. <laughs> you know, I always had a, a tool for whatever job needed to be, that sort of thing. And, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to be handy in today's world. You know, so in, not, in my not, head, it's not at all. Well, I'm sending Cullen out and, you know, he, he'd find himself a girlfriend or whatever. So, yeah. Um, Got to equip him with some swagger. Yeah. And this isn't really a pick, but I saw this and I was kind of like, ooh. Good deal. I saw that the remember the Kershaw Malt, you know the GTC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blade HQ had it for like it's discontinued, but nineteen bucks. Jeez. Yeah, man. I I got kind of opened up to all kinds of nice and expensive pieces. But so anyway, my real pick because it's available and out there. Oh jeez. Um, so what is there? Be no picks left for Mark. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Go ahead would be the Burnley CRKT tuna. Um, it's about 50 bucks. You know, it's made by our, our bro Chacho. You know, Luke makes this and uh, for CRKT and or vice versa, you know. It's a it's a good good deal, good package. I think there's a lot of collectors of it. You know, people are modifying them and having fun with them sort of thing. Yep. But I kind of, I really thought Tom would pick that. So I was real, real leery on adding that to the list. Yeah. I definitely like them, and they're they're really cool. Ben mm-hmm. got a couple of them, and the quality is really good. So those are my twenty five picks. I went with the slip joint because it was college, and I didn't want like to freak people out. Yeah, no, I get that. And the forty seven, that your backup pick is a great choice, right? A forty, a, the Viper, isn't yeah. it forty seven? Yep, it's a Viper. Yeah, yep. so it's a swayback. Mm. I love yeah. swaybacks, man. I don't know what it and is about can, a swayback. That shape. Yeah, me too. And you can put some natural, get some natural materials on there, and it looks real traditional instead of tactical. Right, right. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Slip joint is a really good choice because it's not a freak people out knife, right? You're not pulling a five inch bladed cold steel right. ginormous flipper out of your pocket or whatever. There's stuff that people are kind of accustomed to seeing and it, it doesn't seem weird if that matters and kind of does, right? And especially when they're around people they might not know or whatever. Yeah, it's it's uh, the entry level type of, you know, no scarums. That's why I think, you know, like Swiss Army Knife's a good one too. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. It does everything you need to do and doesn't scare people, which I know people will be like, well, fuck them if they're scared. Well, you know, that, that person just may not know about knives. Doesn't mean they're, you know. Yeah. And it might be a good way to get them into that sort of stuff. Right. Teach them how useful they can be. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Okay, so... I um I picked from a couple different categories in the knife thing too. I my first thought was exactly what we just talked about, slip joint, right? This this is a slip joint pick. Um so I I went with one that uh, I think is is a Sean Kendrick old school favorite, uh, a case medium stockman. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Yeah, three blades, right? So no and a young person or a college kid that would give them three blades to dull up before they actually have a problem. <laughs> Good <laughs> call. Right. Yeah. Now I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's actually a real factor, I think. And some different blade shapes that you can do some different stuff with. That's the only reason I didn't pick a Swayback is they have that Warncliffe blade that's super pointy, and I love them. They were on my favorite slip joint pattern yeah. is a Swayback, but that pointy tip, I guarantee the first time I visit, it's gone. Um, Broken. Yes, from prying something or whatever. Um, so, when, And you think they know better, but yeah. <laughs> well, uh, and they probably do, but, you know, hey, shit happens. Zach, you know how many- Zach was painting in the back this week, and he uh, took his PM2 and tried to pry a paint lid off. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> I mean, there's screwdrivers everywhere just sitting right. around. But yeah, you got to use your PM too. Yeah. You know how many broken tip slip joints I found as a kid at looking for them at flea markets? Oh, I yeah. mean, it ain't oh, just yeah. kids breaking those tips. It's no, everybody. <laughs> right. That's honestly for that reason, I, I got my dad a Alox handled Swiss Army knife because he always carried a buck uh, stockman, but he always had at least one blade broken off, right? Because he tried to pry with it. Yeah, yeah. And I got him. Got him the one, and, and I'm like, don't use your blade to pry with. There's a little screwdriver thing in here. You can pry all you want with that. Never broke another blade, and he loved that knife. Oh, nice. I made my dad yeah. one. Made a custom with a hamon, and I watched him uh, cut drywall with it, with the drywall saw right next to uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> that just hurts your soul. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Everything's a nail when you got a hammer, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So K Stockman, one of the cool things about a uh, Stockman is um, lots of color options, right? So y- you can d- do traditional, like uh, with a cool bone handle or something, or you can get him in funky colors, or you can get him in Michael's favorite clown shoes, Kira Knight. You can get him in a million different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> get it in your kid's school colors. Get it in your kid's school colors. Yep. I did that for a friend of the family here last year, year before. Not even that, several years ago now that I think about it. Um, in exactly that Sean school colors, which is kind of cool. So yeah, lots of choices there. I mean, you know, I'm going Amber bone or box elder or something cool, but maybe that's not a kid speed kind of deal. Right. So, um, carbon steel blade, right. Not terrible to sharpen, uh, and easily within the, the hundred buck window there, depending on how fancy the handle is and whether they're on clearance or not between 55 and 85 bucks, which is pretty cool for a generally solid very traditional multi-blade, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. And then good, good call. Yeah. And like you said, not scary. Nobody's going to freak out when you pull a stock one out of your pocket. Oh, exactly. no, that's Papa's knife. Exactly. Exactly. And there's, I think there's three sizes. There's like a, a large that's four and an eighth or four and a quarter, which is big. That's, mm-hmm. the, yeah. I don't like slip joints that big typically, um, personally. So three and five eighths is kind of in that three and a half zone that I usually look for close length on a slip joint to kind of just disappear in your pocket or maybe squeeze into your watch pocket if you need to. Um, and then they actually make a small one. So there's like a teeny little stockman as well. So lots of options there. 
Um, I did pick another one kind of as a backup because I I thought for sure somebody was going to pick a Stockman. So I picked a backup, which was also one that I was sure was going to get picked. And that is uh, Late HQ has uh, Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. That is 98 yeah. bucks. Mm-hmm. And man, just a fantastic EDC for anybody, right? I would carry that knife gladly as a as an everyday knife. Um, FRN handles, so pretty durable, right? Can take kind of a beating. It's not like you're going to chip it or scuff it or, you know what I mean? And if you do, so what? Um, compression lock. I like their, uh, they get bent real easy, but they're also extremely discreet. They're kind of paper clip style carry clip. I, yeah, like I was about clip to say. A lot. Yeah. They're very comfortable. They're easy to use. They have decent retention and they're not, they don't, it doesn't jump out, right? That you have anything in your pocket and they're set real deep. They have the loop that comes up. So it sits real deep in your pocket. Um, so I think just a super generally easy knife to carry and uh, CTS BD1 blade. So good steel, right? Yeah. yeah. Pretty easy to care for. Yeah. Zach actually just got one of those. Oh, did he? He loves it. To replace his pair of two that he broke? No, he still got the <laughs> pair of two, but he likes it a lot. He's I don't like it. it personally. It's too light. Oh, too light. Yeah. But if you want a lightweight knife, dude, they're freaking cool. Yeah. Yeah, Zach's got a guy that can fix his broken pair of two. Yeah, but he loves it. It's his favorite knife. He stopped carrying the pair of two mostly, so. Yeah, lots of people love the pair of three, so it's kind of a weird one to recommend because lots of people already know about it, but I didn't I didn't realize until I started digging for this episode that you could get one for under 100 bucks and $98 at Blade HQ, mm-hmm. free shipping. Well, maybe not free shipping. Free shipping for orders over $99, but. It's a great deal. Did you guys do the the Blade HQ under a hundred thing? I didn't. Yep. I, I cruised through there. It was very very interesting. There's a lot of stuff I that was discounted that I was just like, man, that that seems so cheap. Yes. There's there a lot of knives I wanted to grab, and it was just interesting right. to see what falls underneath there. Yeah. Yeah. Their their clearance and discontinued or blowout stuff. Some of them are super cheap, and there's some pretty cool stuff in there for the money. Hmm. So the other one I wanted to do, and I didn't even look it up until Michael talked about uh, one of Gus Cicchini's production designs that's out there, is he has a little super small flipper called the BOF, bottle opener flipper, that he does on the custom side of his thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so Kershaw produced a production version of that called the GTC Hops. I assume is in reference to hops for beer because it has a bottle opener on it. So the flipper tab has a bottle opener cut on the backside, just like his custom. So it's a little teeny one and 1.9 inch bladed frame lock. And um, hmm. there's realities of bottle opener if you went away to college. So that would be a really, really fun choice too. And they were, it looks like they're discontinued on blade HQ now, but MSRP was 40 bucks and they were on sale for $16 which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. So they have two, cause that's the malt assist has the bottle opener on the flipper. Yeah. There's the malt and there's the hops. I think the malt is a ah. little bit longer. This one's the little teeny BOF, um, kind of very true to his bottle opener flipper design that on, from his custom stuff. Huh. But I guess it is also assisted. I didn't realize that until I just, you just said that. So 1.9 inch assisted, kind of like, I guess a lot, there's lots of little Kershaw assisted, right? That are mm-hmm. tiny little guys. So like you said, designed by a guy that we like and is a friend of the show. Um, yeah. You know, pretty cool little, cool little knife. All right. There were some good picks in there. I really like those. Yeah. Is there any knife stuff that we want to hit before we move on to the next category? Tom, you said you picked a couple of fixed blades or something, or how do you want to do yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I mean, we can throw those in now. Yeah. Um, basically, for me anyways, when it came to the weekend at college, I was wanting to get out. We did hiking and camping and that kind of stuff. And during the week, like, we'd get out and have fires and when it was cooler and, you know, it's just a cool way to, you know, go play Frisbee and have some hot dogs or s'mores or whatever. And it was cheap. And so... uh I think a belt knife really works better for that. You can do it with the Swiss army knife, but really for bang for buck, it's hard to beat like a Mora. Um, Mm -hmm. And the, they have the bushcraft forest, which is $35 on Amazon. It's actually like 33 and that's a great little uh, fixed blade uh, for that. 
And if you didn't want to fix blade, um, there's another Alox handled Swiss Army knife called the Hunter, the Pro, the Hunter Pro. Okay. And it's, I don't know why they did it. It's, it should be just Scandi, but they put a secondary bevel. But if you sharpen that secondary bevel off, you basically got a really rigid locking, folding Scandi bushcraft knife. And I, I really like those. I've got several of them here in the shop to regrind to get rid of that secondary bevel. And once you do that, they, they turn out really good. So that, that way you've got something to do your fire, you know, your fuzz sticks to start your fire, or you know, cut a green branch to roast your hot dog on or whatever. Okay. So it's a Victorinox and, but it's just a knife. That's not, there's none of the, there's none of the multi-tool function stuff. It's basically like a lockback right. kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. They're really good. They've got a clip. So if you're going out, you know, if you didn't want a fixed blade, this would be a good alternative. And then something you also need, like when my kids went out, um, in the car, like I gave them each a hatchet. So they each got like some kind of a hatchet. And then I got them a cold steel Spetsnaz shovel for their car. Oh yeah. I think those are two, two really good things that, uh, every car should have. You know, if a yeah. limb comes down across a road or you get stuck or you need to dig a hole or if you need to protect yourself, it's pretty hard to beat an entrenching tool. Honestly, they're, they don't look scary, but if you know anything about it, they're pretty wicked. Dude, just a army surplus, um, entrenching yeah. tool. It was fantastic. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, it, they worked, you know, trust me, you can, you can shovel with them when you have to. I, I really like the the cold steel one, honestly, because it's it's a really good copy of the Spetsnaz, and uh, it's got a wooden handle, and they don't they're they're pretty solid, and the edges are sharp, and you can throw it, and they're just fun. Oh, yeah, uh, well, yeah. That, my that's kids have them in their cars. A good bonus for a car. I mean, not just kids. I mean, just yeah, anybody. Oh yeah, they're like twenty bucks, I think. Especially especially if you're like up where I am in. And not that you guys don't get snow, but we get a lot of snow. And so oh, yeah. it's very common for people to have an entrenching tool or some kind of shovel set up, you know, like a breakdown shovel in their trunk because shit goes bad really fast and sometimes very much by surprise. Like you guys get a lot of black ice kind of stuff. We get the same sometimes and and uh, we get a false sense of security. The Glock shovel is a really good shovel too if you, you know. Are still making that? More. I don't, honestly, I don't know. I haven't seen one in a while, but I haven't looked. Um, yeah. I need to, I need to re-get some uh, sportsman guide. Remember that? Oh, yeah. I oh, still yeah. get emails from them. Yeah. yeah. I, I want the For catalog, sure. though. I used to love getting that in the mail because it had all that stuff in it. Right. I can get myself some Russian Sur- binoculars surplus. that are like yeah. $300 that can see to the moon. And right. Some <laughs> Swiss Ar- Swiss Army World War II pants or something. Yeah. Oh, really yeah, like. man. I love that catalog. Man, it looks like and, you can get a Glock E-Tool for 45 bucks on the Zon. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. And they're great. All right. Do you have any other knife-related picks, Tom, before we move on to the tool category? So, well, I mean, kind of ties in. The, the hatchet that I had in college was... I got a, it was like a roofing hatchet from my grandpa and I've still got it. It's on my wall Mm -hmm. and that worked great. And I, I was in Lowe's this morning. I went and looked, you can get a Vaughn. It's identical to it for like 20 bucks. If you need a a cheap hatchet to throw in your car or send off with a kid that you don't, you know, they may tear it up that, you know, you don't want to send your Grandpa's Brooks or your Liam Hoffman or whatever. It's a great, great tool. Um, got to be better than the what is it cog what was the 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 cheap walmart coglins or something i don't, I don't know then they had the fiskers and they're really it was big. the brand that you, they had like the emergency hammock and uh i had oh, a hatchet yeah, for yeah, yeah as a kid it was not good but well for 20 bucks it's it's a like a working tool it's what you know yeah people i do have a knife for. one i i do need to add and i feel like we'd be a little remiss if we didn't put this in here but it was over the price over the hundred dollar price yeah. and that's the rexford rut yeah those are great yeah, those are neat i think you can probably find them used maybe but man and that's that's the ultimate i'm not scaring little, anybody this is a utility it's a little razor blade knife you don't have to be able to sharpen anything yeah right 
you know, you're not scaring anybody with that. It's handy as shit, you know. So and I found some for uh, 165, I think it was on Knife Center. Okay, I think it was. So in stock at the time of recording. Yeah, KnifeCenter.com. Yeah, they're really handy, especially just I keep something very similar to break down boxes because we recycle all of our boxes here at the shop. So yeah, uh, you know it's you got to cut them down, and we get a lot. It didn't it didn't quite didn't quite match the price, but it, man, it's, we had I had to say something. Yeah, no, it's a great example of something that's super practical, and one of the beautiful parts about a rut is that it's not. To Tom's point, it's not like a full-size utility knife that is annoying to carry in your pocket, right? It's super slim, so mm-hmm. the thing can just get stashed in there and used very easily. One of our friends like gave me one. one of those a bunch of years ago, and man, that thing is super, super useful. Lots it's of right. variations out pocket. there. Yeah. Got a bottle opener, pry bar, and there's a lot of variations of like, I think you kind of started to trend. There's a ton of those out there, but yeah, get the rut, man. Get the oh, OG. Yeah. Yep, yep. No, that's a great uh, design thing from Todd. All right, so we talked about knives. Lots of good choices, some creative choices in there. Pretty cool. Uh, let's talk about a tool. So like uh, we're talking like a multi-tool or a pocket tool, anything that kind of fits in that bucket, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, Michael, you want to take a first swing at this one? Well, man, I... I haven't looked at like multi-tools in a long time and it was interesting seeing what's out there. You know, I've had one that I still do a SOG. I've had uh, Leatherman's when they first came out because my dad would do, he ended up actually doing some uh, reviews on them back in the day. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got a Gerber, you know, that has kind of the automatic, you know, that shoots out. Yeah. The, I uh, still got that in my fishing thing to, you know, just in case some, they swallow hook or whatnot. But then I was like, I had to go back to just a regular old Swiss champ. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't help it. You know, it's 79 bucks on blade HQ. It, it's got a lot of stuff. And like Tom covered before it, you're not, you're not scaring anybody. You're not doing anything The the pliers obviously aren't going to be up to par with a multi-tool type of thing, but they're just handy as shit. You can keep them in your, you know, whether you start a new job, you need to put it in your, pack if your job allows it you know that type of stuff you can right. toss it in there and, and have about anything you need your scissors you know tweezers which are nice as shit that you use those more than you think you would yeah for sure so i don't know it, i don't know I just, I just like them and i think it's a, a handy tool and and usually if you're you know if you're sending your kid off to start a new life you're gonna send them with some cheap tools you know that you know real pliers and then screwdriver set the usual type of stuff or at least I hope. Yep. So that was my pick. It's 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 a cool. I mean, I have one. I enjoy it. Sometimes I just like getting all the stuff out and looking at it. Swiss Champ for folks that aren't super familiar or, or who are driving when they're listening is like a thirty three function Swiss Army knife. So this is mm-hmm. like the do everything kind of version of a Swiss Army knife. And and like you said, it might not be your pocket choice, but throw it in your backpack or in your bag or. Yeah, it's wide, real wide. Yeah, but and, and part of that I think is nostalgia for me because I remember as a kid being like, "Oh, the champ." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a magnifying glass, which actually probably is a lot more useful than it might seem at first glance. Jeez, <laughs> more useful every day it seems. Who didn't want one of those as a kid? Nobody, <laughs> nobody didn't want one. Not who. Yeah, that that was the coolest. I mean, it's. When you got one, they're kind of a, a handful, but as a kid, it's like the potential. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> right. the, you, yeah. There's so many adventures you can have in your mind with that. That is so very true, Tom. You kind of hit the nail on the head there. Potential adventures. Yeah. Very cool choice. Swiss mm-hmm. champ. Yeah. I, I actually don't have one of those. I do. I, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think I have a Swiss that has a magnifying glass. But that would be super useful to Sean's comment earlier. I'd... What do you say, burn ants? Uh, it just it seems like every day I need a magnifying <laughs> exactly. glass a little more. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reality of it, right? And it's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I have like a jeweler's loop that I keep on my desk at home. And 
when I got it, I'm like, okay, this is just kind of like a cool watch guy wannabe thing to have around. And dude, I use that thing all the time. I'm constantly looking at something or another with that little guy. It's super useful. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, what about you, Sean? What did you pick for some kind of tool category for this, uh, this picks episode? I actually picked the Gerber pliers, the Gerber plier multi-tool. Oh, nice. I think it's, let's see, I like the MP600. It's just a black multi-tool. I like the way the Gerber pliers work. I like not having to unfold and having to, you know, fucking manually butterfly knife to get to my fucking pliers. You just hit the two little buttons, pop them out, and you're good to go. That's kind of cool because it's like a gravity knife. and You know what I yeah. mean? It's like you yeah. can shoot them It out. is a little bit. Are yours like the auto version? Because mine like slam out. No, no. Ground. All the ones I've played with is just you pinch them and, you know, it's loose enough that the handle drops down and your pliers are exposed. Oh, mine are, uh, maybe it's an older model that, that they don't make anymore, but they're like, oh, they slam out. And then you have to push them in, hit the button and push them in. Oh, wow. To reload. Like an OTF. <laughs> like a. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, hell yeah, it is. I think I've got two sets of those, but mine are just the, the gravity. Hmm. Losers. Apparently. So the MP600 has a bunch of other functions, right, Sean? It's got other stuff stashed oh, in the yeah. handle in addition to the, the pliers that deploy out. Oh, yeah. Some screwdriver bits and bottle opener slash can opener. Uh, the handle's marked as a measuring tool. Uh, let's see. It's got a... I'd say that's a serrated sheep's foot blade and then a horncliffe blade, a file, you know, two-sided. You know, the standard multi-tool shit. Right. Uh, the blades are locking. Oh, the blades lock. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. If you look at the picture, you'll see at the bottom of the handle on each side, it looks like there's a slider. Oh, yeah. And that is how you disengage the lock. Slick, man. Very cool. And well within the price range. Yes, easily. I mean, if the price range had been a little higher, I like the Leatherman Charge also. Yeah. But it's a little out of price range. And yep. to be truthful, I like the Gerber plier feature much better. All right. Well, that's a good, good pick. Call. What about you, Tom? What'd you choose for a tool? So this is something that I personally looked at quite a bit here recently. Um, I've always been a Leatherman fan. I've got the Gerbers. Um, I never had a SOG or a Swiss Army uh, version for whatever reason. But uh, leather, I was always kind of a Leatherman guy, and uh, I I always loved the Super Tool for whatever reason. Um, they're big and bulky, but I carried one. I mean, I know I put one on the bottom of the White River. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. And I had a regular Leatherman, just the original tool back in the day that uh, in the 90, early 90s, like 93, when I moved back, a uh, storm came up and I had to tie a tarp down and I put it on the back bumper and... I left it in Nashville somewhere. Ah. Um, but I always kept buying more Leathermans. And uh, recently I had the Wingman, um, and I wasn't super thrilled with it. I had the Super Tool, one of the old school Super Tools still too, uh, but it's pretty bulky. And I was really wanting something with a clip. And uh, Leatherman has the free P4. It's it's above the price point. Uh but I picked it anyways. Um, <laughs> Unapologetically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I've, I, I've saved enough money on all the other stuff that I figured <laughs> splurge on this. Cause it's, uh, it's really got a lot of good tools and, and for a kid going back to school or whatever, you know, it's got a solid screwdriver and, uh, it's got scissors, backup saw. That's pretty decent and all that. And if you wanted to save some money, you could drop down to the free P2, which is only like on, on Leatherman side, it's 120 bucks. So it's a little over and it's got most of the tools, but they've got a really neat like magnetic, uh, system for holding them all closed and everything. Um, and they all lock and it's got a really nice deep pocket carry clip. So I really like those. And if, if you really are a stickler on the money, get the weight. I think it's the Leatherman wave and it's right at a hundred bucks, but the Leatherman are, they're my favorite. So that's it. I figured you'd have some good knowledge on that. I'm just, I'm not very versed on the multi-tools. Yeah. I, I literally this year I started researching it cause I, you know, I carry a gun, I carry a knife, but 
I don't ever really carry up any tools really. So I started to want to carry that. I carry it in the back left pocket and it works, works really good when I need it. And I don't really notice it the rest of the time. Hmm. Yeah. You knew kind of in this category, Leatherman was going to come up a couple of times. Right. And, Oh yeah. yeah. And with the Swiss army thing, it, when you start to talk about a knife and a tool, they, they could certainly could appear in either bucket for what we're talking about. Oh yeah. So I had two picks in here for the tool. I have one of the those original Leatherman that you're talking about, Tom. The old ones with the leather yeah, good. snap um, flapped mm-hmm. case and the whole deal. I got that, man, years and years and years ago. I, I looked into it because I know those the old, old ones are quite collectible anymore. And um, Oh, yeah. I ended up looking up markings and all kinds of stuff. It's been a long time that I, ago that I did that. But I think it's a pretty early one. I must have got it at a gun show or something or, man, I don't even remember. It was before online, right? It wasn't an online purchase. It was like I bought it somewhere. Um, and I wouldn't say I've used it a ton over the years, but there have been some kind of clutch moments where it was like, man, I'm glad I had it in my pack, right? I Hell yeah. I didn't often carry it. Like, it's got the little belt loop on the back. Um, I'm not sure. I know once or twice I did actually put it on my belt when I was doing some kind of project that I thought I might need it, but where it's coming the most handy is where it's stashed in a backpack and, you know, Mm -hmm. some weird thing happens or especially with the car stuff that we do, right? You never know. There's like something gets unplugged, some connector somewhere, especially in a test car that has a million miles of extra wiring and measurement equipment and all kinds of stuff. And, that thing proved to be pretty clutch over the years. Um, you know, and they got the ruler on the handle and <laughs> all kinds of th- things that when you look at them, when you first pull it out and unfold it, it's like, really, am I going to actually use this stuff? And then you never know <laughs> when the situations pop up and it's like, damn, I'm glad I had that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So an OG, an OG Leatherman is a really cool thing. And at this point, it's kind of like a nostalgia thing. I'm not even sure if it would fit in the price point. But that was the first thing that came to mind because that's what I've carried for a bunch of years. And I still have it in one of my bags. So ironically, they still make that. And oh, yeah. it's $275. Good God. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's like their collection, collector's edition. Yeah. Wow. But yeah. Pretty it's, funny. It's interesting because with travel, right before this uh, lockdown thing happened, I was doing lots of travel again for work. And so over the years, I've always had to be really careful. And somehow that thing has survived where I didn't forget to take it out of a bag that I was grabbing to go to the airport, right? <laughs> because right. like my, I had some kind of close call where I had to stash a knife at the airport somewhere and, and cross my fingers that I could get it back when I came home. And after that, it became like a, a drill when I'm packing to travel, like, okay, go through my work bag and make sure that I take out anything that, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to see thrown away. Um, right. And so somehow my original Leatherman managed to survive all that, which is amazing. Um, but then my other one that I think you can actually get for under the price point, it's not a, it's not a uh, super wazoo version of Leatherman, but um, this one actually came recommended to me by an OG friend of ours named Moko um, at the mm. New York show. Moko walked up to me at the New York show and handed me one of these some years ago now and said, dude, get the juice. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what? And he's like, check it out. And so he handed me this um, Leatherman Juice S2. And uh, he's like, it's so cheap that you can't not get one. It's got really useful stuff. It's got a decent set of pliers. It's got a, a full size set of scissors. It's got a real Phillips screwdriver in it, which is super cool instead of the kind of makeshift, you know what I mean? Small, <laughs> small flat blade instead of a real Phillips. Um, yeah. It's got a bottle opener. It's got a can opener. It's got still a scratch all and a regular screwdriver, all that stuff. And I wouldn't say it's the do all, but it, I would say it's the do 90% of stuff. And it is actually quite compact and um, it was cheap. It got good scissors too. The yeah. scissors are good. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Really nice set of scissors. And like Michael said, that's one that, man, especially if you're on the move or traveling or something else, it's handy to have a pair of scissors more than you might think, right? Like, cause you don't tend to carry them around, right? They're stashed in a drawer somewhere. Yeah. So in, in my med kit, I have a Juice XE6, the, the uh-huh. slightly larger version. Okay. Because 
you never the pliers are great for getting splinters out it's got scissors for gauze all that yep great My choice dad, he actually wore out the uh pouch you know the leather pouch that the leatherman came in oh yeah yep wow he used to carry one all the time on the farm just you know when those things came out he had it on he was he had that thing on him on his side yeah you can fix anything with baling wire and duct tape, and that's you need mm-hmm. something to cut the baling wire with. <laughs> it's a straight MacGyver thing, no doubt. I, I had a experience a bunch of years ago at work. I was working with a, one of our mechanics, and he pulled a Leatherman off his belt, and it was an original one like mine, but his, maybe like your dad's, Michael, was, like mine was always real stiff, right? Because I didn't use it that often. Mm-hmm. I used it in a pinch kind of thing. And this dude, his, he like butterfly knife flipped the yeah. the thing open. I'm like, holy shit. And he's like, oh yeah, dude, this thing, I've used it a lot and twisted it ways it's not yeah. supposed to be twisted and shit's loose, but it's held together and I kind of peen the pins when I need to. And I'm like, wow, look at you. Yeah. I, I'd loathe to think of how, how that uh, Leatherman looked when dad was done with it. <laughs> <laughs> you should ask him if he still has it. Oh, who knows? I bet it. I bet it died a horrible death. Yeah, or fell off a tractor or something. Right, who right. Knows? Got plowed under. Mm-hmm. Great so, choice. Like, Moco, Moco, Moco approved a Leatherman Juice S two. So I still have that in one of my bags. Yeah. So it was a good recommendation. You can't get them new anymore. Um, at least the original version of it. They are on eBay. You can find them for under hundred. There's people that want a lot more than that for them. I guess Leatherman collectors or something. I don't know. But yeah, pr- pretty neat stuff. I think we covered the tool category. Let's let's dish oh, yeah. Tom and see if he had any secret tool picks that he wants to throw in here before mm-hmm. we move on to the next one. No. I, I went in all up front. I went over the limit, so I figured I'd just pick one. <laughs> I just you know. I'm only going to break the rules once. That's fine. So let's uh, let's go to the light category. And Sean, you want to talk about a a pick for a, a light for someone headed out into the world? Yeah, uh, man, I went super cheap on this, uh, and it's a flashlight I'm really familiar with. I picked a Maglite Mini Pro LED. It's a two cell double A flashlight. Yeah. Nice. And man, I'm a fan of the Maglite. I remember when my dad first got one of the original Maglites when I was a kid. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. That light still fucking runs. It's 35 years old, maybe 37 years old, and it's still good to go. Yeah. So, I mean, throwing the LED in there, it makes it that much better. And another thing I was thinking about was batteries. Right. I've given people flashlights that run off CR123s, and eventually those batteries die and they never fucking replace them. Yeah, they're expensive. Double A's are everywhere. Give, you know, something that takes double A's and they'll keep their toy batteried up, you know? Absolutely. Well, then there's a cool, uh, like you said, for, for those of us that have been around for a minute, there's a cool nostalgic aspect, right? I remember um, hand, the first time I handled like a 2D cell mag light, it was like, oh my God, this thing is like a searchlight. It's so bright and it's a big, <laughs> yeah. giant, beefy thing, right? And uh, now, since LEDs have been around so long, any of the incandescent mag light stuff looks like a candle with a reflector, right? It's like, what? Yeah. How did I think that was so powerful? But I feel like looks like an Abe Lincoln candle getting ready to read some <laughs> right. books. Exactly. Well, the early Surefires are the same way. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Remember when you could get like 75 eye-melting lumens? Right. Blast through that yeah, C123 or whatever CR. <laughs> yeah. You're like, how much for the batteries again? <laughs> right. <laughs> Son of a gun. Yeah, that's a cool choice, Sean. I, they're ubiquitous, right? They're like a, a cornerstone thing of like the whole flashlight world. Yeah, well, I mean, mm-hmm. man, it's been around so long because it fucking works. Right, right. I mean, it's pretty bare bones. And you can get the light I'm talking about on Amazon for $16. Right, yeah. Right. I think that's a really common thing that, that sometimes... Um, gets lost is there's this you know with flashlights especially you know any kind of enthusiast flashlight kind of situation people are very spun up like with cars or whatever right about horsepower or in, with lights right like lumens or whatever and it becomes all about that and less about how practical is it or you know what i mean just how durable mm-hmm. is it or whatever and man i 
I've seen some mag lights that <laughs> have literally been run over by a car or, you know what I mean? Just absolutely the, the black anodizing completely beaten off of them and they still work and keep on ticking. They're not complicated and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, no funky bullshit inside to get screwed up and no complicated user interface and all that other stuff. They're something to be said for beauty and simplicity, right? Yeah, man, I really like the I really like the adjustable lens. I like being able to go from a tight, you know, beam into a you know full throw kind of general. Oh yeah, I like having that you, that way. Do you guys remember the when they came out with the rechargeable um, biggin? Oh yeah, my my pops yeah. got that one, and I thought that was just the shit. Yeah, well, man, it kind of blew my mind that you can get a three D self maglite for twenty five bucks now. Wow! Oh, wow! Yeah, for real. Two links paid off. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. They amortized all of that big equipment out, and now they're cheap. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I, th- you know, one of the fun things I w- took a spin at some point off into the whole flashlight world a bunch of years ago before I found USN actually, and around here somewhere I have a couple of modded mag light, full size mag lights that Me are too. C or D cell <laughs> yeah. with multiple LEDs inside that are absolute beasts, man. I, that we had one that sat next to our rear, like the back of our house faces the woods and, um, you know, something goes bump in the night. It's kind of nice to be able to kind of look around in the woods and see what's going on. And, you know, the dog freaks out or whatever. And man, that thing, (laughs) you don't have to pivot very far to light up the whole damn woods behind the house with one of those things. They're beasts. Those things would light paper on fire. Yeah. Yeah. They're wild. Yeah, I've got a couple of those around here somewhere too. Yeah, very fun. What was the one um, of oh, the uh, Surefire? I when I had my old job at Bass Pro Shops, I I tested that one out. It was a Surefire, uh, real expensive one. And it, man, I can't remember the name of that. Oh, thing. I know what you're like, talking about. It's like a searchlight or whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, I was blown oh, it takes away. Takes the magazine of batteries. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's a magazine of fucking batteries. It's wild. $100 of batteries. It was a beast. I was just like, holy shit, lights will never be as bright as this. It's uh, it's amazing. I can't remember what that beast was called. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember what it's called either, but yeah. It was a long time ago, buddy. (laughs) All right, Michael, what was your light pick? Uh, I got a couple here. Um, The... uh, when we were getting ready to go to the Grand Canyon before the COVID started in March or whatever. Yeah. You know, I asked you about flashlights because truthfully, I didn't want to get into it because of what we talked about previously. <laughs> if I start going into a rabbit hole, I'm not coming back out. So right. I asked you and you, you recommended the Phoenix LD42. Yeah. You know, for a variety of reasons. It's got a pocket clip. Um, it's... I think it's zero to whatever it is, you know, the, it's, it's very, uh, I don't know if they actually go true zero or whatever it is, but it's got the ring to turn it on all the way up to whatever that you want. Yep. It runs on double A's pretty important. I think to, especially for college kids, I don't, or, you know, younger kids are not going to recharge stuff. Right. You know, so it's, it's, and I use it around here all the time. It's a great flashlight. Is it a, if I remember right, is it isn't it a side by side double A or something funky? It's is it round? Yeah. yeah, it's got a flat profile to it. Yeah, flat profile. It's it's a bigger flashlight, but nothing crazy. And it's sixty five bucks. I mean, but it's yeah, yeah. It's so and it goes to a thousand lumens, and I don't know. I don't know if I need much more than that. It's I'm sure if I got into it, I would. But I like it. Right, it's a good flashlight. But one I really wanted to talk about, but I could not for the life of me remember the name of it, was the one you you gave me. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Quantum? Yep. I, I looked up Quantum, and it pulled up a whole bunch of weird flashlights. Yeah. Valino Designs, V-E-L-E-N-O. Uh, Steve Koo, K-U, is the guy who uh, who did those. That's what it was. It, I love that flashlight. I still, it's a keychain flashlight, uh, rechargeable through... Um, your computer through the, uh, it's got a little USB charger. Yeah. USB charge thing and kind of funky little battery. 
but man, that thing puts out some light. Same thing, you know, turn it up to as bright as you need or as little as you need. And I don't know. I, I use that all the time. Yep. I don't, don't notice it, but man, it, you, a keychain flashlight, a good one is indispensable. Oh yeah. For anybody. Yep. I still have on, yeah. on my keys as well. In fact, I kind of, when I went to like a very minimal wallet set up and I got rid of a wallet actually, and just use a money clip with a couple of cards, my ID and a little bit of folded cash. I did the same with my keys. And, um, so I keep a ring of keys in my work bag, right. To be able to get my office at work and do other stuff. But, um, only thing on my keychain is my key fob for my car and that little quantum flashlight. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are really cool. They're like, uh, for people that aren't familiar with them, I would say, they're the size maybe of the last two knuckles of your um, pinky finger. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Maybe actually smaller diameter than that, depending on your hands. And uh, yeah, it uses a tiny, tiny cell. What is that thing? A 10, 280 or something? It, it's it, some. Yeah. It's almost like a RC type of uh, small, you know, quad copter type of right battery. Real, real funky. The the battery is mysteriously small. It's not the only light that uses that tiny battery. There are a number of them in the custom light world that use that little tiny battery, but it lets the light be really small. And the cool part about that thing that I thought was really fascinating, got my attention initially when I first saw them, was that it doesn't use like a traditional driver, like where it uses, you know, PWM, like a pulse of the power to control how bright it is or you know, or varying current in a traditional sense where there's a circuit and stuff, it uses a thing called a QTC. And it's like this little tiny piece of almost like rubbery foam. But I mean, it's really tiny. Like it's, I'm going to say two millimeters by two millimeters or smaller, right? It's a little tiny square of this stuff. And (laughs) they call it quantum tunneling. And so it's this thing where the, the material is basically like a resistor when it's not compressed. It doesn't pass current. And as you screw down the light, right, it's a twist style light. As you screw it tighter and tighter, it compresses the material. And as it compresses the material, the current flow path straightens out Hmm. and it starts to pass current. So the tighter you squeeze that little kind of, um, sliver I'll call it or that little uh, piece of material the tighter you squeeze it the more current it passes so they they call it quantum tunneling because it's like this idea that it's a a material that passes more current the the tighter you squeeze it which absolutely blew my mind I'm like that's just so fucking cool <laughs> I, I I just thought it was super super fun and it eventually it can wear out and other stuff right people that have those lights some of them have actually squashed it so flat sometimes that it doesn't want to return to its original shape, but I think it's kind of cut from another piece of material and you just get another little tiny, tiny spot of the stuff and stick it on that spot inside and boom, you're back in business. It's pretty cool. It's, it's bright as shit. It really is for the size and it looks like you can still get them. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. Uh, Valino designs.com. I'm on there now. You can, and you kind of build your own. Oh, really? Yeah, you add it's sixty dollars for the stainless, then you you have an option of cool white, neutral. Um, oops, is out of stock. No, yeah, not. maybe he's not. I was gonna say That's it's up. been a while. Interesting. They're out there though. You can find them in the forums and stuff. People have them for sale every once in a while. A lot of times, people never put them on their keychain, so they didn't get as beat as yours or mine. Um, yours is a silver one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine's mine was black DLC'd. And it's kind of now sort of this uh, coffee with a splash of milk in it kind of color <laughs> I bet. from rattling around in my pocket and getting banged on stuff and all the corners are worn off, you know, very relic looking kind of piece. But yeah, they're super useful. I, I think there was two versions. There was one called a Quantum D2 and one called a Quantum DD. Yeah, they're fun. That's a good pick. I mean, obviously I like it. I gave you one. I liked it. So. Mm-hmm. What... Um, so we did a Sean pick. We did, do we do a, your light pick, Tom? I haven't. All right. What about well, yours? I was going to pick the the same quantum light that Michael talked about, but it was another kind of 
kind of like my juice S2 recommendation was like a go find it on eBay kind of project. So I didn't, um, I came up with two. Um, one was a, a light that our, a friend of ours named Chris Crow suggested a while ago called a, yeah. a Rovi Von, which is a really weird name. R O V Y V O N kind of spelled like one word, but written with a capital V in there. Uh, Rovivan Aurora A5X. And um, Chris suggested this to a few of us a little while ago. And maybe last year, or I think it was last year. Um, 650 lumens, but in something that was kind of like, uh, oh, I'll call it the size of that Quantum D2 times one and a half. Still an really? extremely small light. Yeah, maybe about the size of your middle finger down to the second knuckle. I mean, like still a very, very uh, small light. Yeah. You remember seeing the post, right? Where he talked about, I that. do now. Yeah. 650. Yeah. Because it had UV on it. Cause I knew you were thinking about a UV light. So yeah. they, they call it the a five X UV 650 lumens on max. It's got a, I really like over the years, I've come to really like lights that have a control on the side instead of on the ass end. Mm -hmm. Um, so it has a side button and it's very keychain friendly because it's so small. It's bigger than my quantum, so I didn't put it on my keys. I put it in my bag, hanging on a little loop inside my bag. But um, it's rechargeable, meaning it doesn't take a battery. It's got a little flat lithium polymer battery inside, kind of like in your Bluetooth headset or you know in your AirPods or whatever. Um, oh. so, so it's got a little like Trident gum shaped battery built into it, and you charge it from your USB on your computer or that you charge your phone from or whatever. So the cool part is there's no batteries to lose, right? I figured, hey, a college kid's going to be able to charge it right from the USB on their laptop. Yeah. Um, and it has this UV function, which I had, mm. a, I had a really, really good ultraviolet light of when I was into the flashlight thing once upon a time. And it was super cool. Um, but it was like a what I'll call a proper UV where it wasn't very bright at all. It looked really dim even in darkness when it was on, but man, it would fluoresce all kinds of shit. Um, it was, it was a really, really good ultraviolet light. And I ended up selling it after a while cause it was kind of fun to play with, but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Um, this thing has a UV function and I think it's, I think its primary purpose is to make the outer casing of the light glow because yeah, the light's basically it. made out of glow material and um, so you could like hold it in your hand, kick the UV function on, even with it cl inside a closed fist, and it would charge the light, um, the glow in the dark stuff, and it would glow like crazy. Um, it also yeah, will. It does. It also does a really good job of like charging the loom on your watch, or you know what I mean, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's thirty eight bucks on Amazon, and um, it's extremely powerful for its size. And it is a pretty cool light. So high five Chris for recommending that. I ended up buying one right after he talks about it. Cause I'm like, Oh, I like that. I could charge that. And, um, so that's kind of my, my backup travel light in my work bag, um, because I can charge it anywhere. It doesn't matter what country I'm in or whatever. And, uh, it's extremely small. So I could just toss it in my pocket if I need to, when I got to get out on the go. I like that quite a bit. I'd, I'd forgotten all about that. I just remember, you know, once again, back to that, uh, Oh, going to Grand Canyon, the kids wanted UV for, uh, you know, scorpions or whatever. Right. And I was just like, do not bring that into the vacation rental home. <laughs> I, and at the end, I was like, I, I can't let them have it because they will inevitably uh, turn it on. Uh, and then my vacation's ruined. Hey, right. there's been snails here. <laughs> right. What's the splatter on my wall? Uh, yeah. All that kind of stuff. I, I still think you... Well, you didn't end up going, but that would have been really cool to take one. Oh, Finding scorpions would be neat. I, I think if I like made him hand it to me at, at the door, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> hand it over, it's it's. I would have been fine. First time they flash what, it at the kitchen, Bert just yeah. like throwing up and walking outside. I, I'm not yeah, I just it. I know it's there. But I don't need to see it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So cool little light. Um, I, I had the same thought. My other pick was the same kind of thought process that Sean had, uh, and that was the, the first thing I thought of was double A light, right? Double A battery, and um, because you can get them anywhere, right? They're cheap. Um, a, a lot of the double A flashlights out there will take a 
14500 rechargeable battery. So if you actually had a kid who didn't mind dealing with that piece of it, um, they're much more powerful and they run pretty long on a 14500, but they got to bring a charger and all that stuff, right? So they could always throw double A's at it if they needed to. Um, I, we started our kids really young putting putting those Enna loop rechargeable batteries, the nickel metal hydride rechargeables, in, oh, yeah. in everything just because we burned through so many AA batteries so fast when they were young that we switched everything to those Enna loops. And so we got a big bag of those around. Um, so it'll run off those as well. Um, so I, I picked this light called the Sofern SP10A, which is... I think some random Chinese flashlight company like there are by the thousand out there. Um, S O F I R N S P 10 a. And, uh, I actually, instead of using blade HQ, my reference on this light thing was, uh, the budget light forum. I think they're called. Mm -hmm. Those guys are way into flashlights that are okay. cheap and extremely functional or powerful. And so uh, I got this recommendation there. Double A or rechargeable side button like I like. Um, no, they don't use a PWM function to control the output, which sometimes can bug people's eyes, right? Because you can detect the flash when the pot light gets turned way down. Um, and they're thirteen bucks, which is insane. I don't, wow. I don't remember the output, but pretty, pretty decent and really good on fourteen five hundred. They have another version of it that is a little bit like what Sean mentioned earlier, almost like a. It doesn't have a magazine, but it's a four double A, and they go in like a revolver cylinder, um, called an SF eleven, and I think it's actually quite affordable as well. But um, I agree, Sean. If you're not going to have something that plugs in and charges off your computer or something, a double A is a really good way to go. Yeah. I got a I got a question for you on that you guys might know. Earlier before LEDs, there was like a I I want to say it was called Dr. Zeiss, like maybe it was connected to Zeiss company. Okay. But they made a a flat pocket type of flashlight um but it used uh optics to extend the incandescent versus like it had a real um bubble you know kind of fisheye type of thick lens yeah yeah do, do you guys remember what that was or who made it um yeah what do they call that kind of light that has that big bug eye lens on it um, or a slide it slides to focus it or turns i know it just it used that that to brighten it and expand it as versus you know having before leds and you can add more and more it was like that it was a bright little pocket flashlight back in the 90s my my dad had one but i don't remember it was doctor something but i don't remember what it was someone out there will will know i don't know i don't it'll bother me until i figure it out yeah i was just trying to look it up there's a funky name oh and a an aspheric lens a s p h e r i c yep. um that's what the uh lens light lights use yeah, yeah, yeah. Is one That's of those what I was thinking, kind lenses. of bubble or bug eye shape, but they actually made those aspheric lenses for like mag light size lights too. Because I remember seeing people that had modded them to take those huge lenses on the front. Um, I don't know about the doctor one you're talking about, Michael. It kind of rings a bell. It kind of doesn't. I don't know. It, it's old school. I mean, like I said, '90s type of. Yeah, it was like very flat. Took like it, I think it was supposed to go in your back pocket, but it was like the smallest. You know, the one that was like, this blows my mind how, how much it puts out for such a small flashlight. Right, right. Interesting. Like you said, a listener will let us know what that was. I'm mm -hmm. sure somebody out there's got one stashed away. Tom, what did you pick for your light? So when I when I was looking at lights, and I've I've kind of gone down the rabbit hole a little bit, uh, as you know. Um, <laughs> no. My, my first thought was, this is a college kid, um, and so I thought, it needs to be double a not rechargeable and also actually my my main pick was a Roby Vaughn. that's what i actually got all my kids for christmas and oh, sent, nice. sent out with them it's they're great lights i can't say enough things about them but um my second thought um would be like the county com they do pretty good stuff um and they've got a line of triple a AA or double a lights and i personally like the double a, I think it's a good size. Um, and you get a little more, uh, light and a little more, uh, battery time. Yeah. But they do the, uh, uh let me pull it up here. 
the, they have a copper one, which I, I like copper. So, and I figure, you know, that's another talking point if you're using something different than anyone else. So for fifth, fifth, well, I mean, really, and that, you got to think about that in college, right? Yeah. Trying to meet, to meet people. Up chicks and, tip. I got it. I'm just, yeah. mm, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But uh, they have a double A copper flashlight. Uh, it's the Maritac Rev 6. Um, yep. And I've got a bunch of those stashed in my bags because I, I actually usually carry some of the higher output stuff. But in the bags, I, especially when I'm traveling, I want something that I can grab a double A if I need to. And they're easy to find. Um, and that's one that I really like. The other one I really like is an Olight and it's the I five T it's real simple. I've got a copper one and you know, it's got like two settings. It's simple to run. Um, and my thought was with the rechargeable stuff, some of that gets kind of sketchy, um, fire wise and all that kind of stuff. And last thing you need in a dorm or whatever is, uh, you know, <laughs> a lithium ion fire. L- yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that's serious. Um, but if you did want to go with a rechargeable light, um, the S one R baton from Olight is yeah. pretty good and they've got a pretty cool charging system now. So you don't have to take the battery out of the light at all. It's just like you set it on the, it's like magnetic. It sits on the tail cap and charges your light, which is yep. cool. Cause you don't have to handle the batteries. So those are all the Olight SR one S one R is the most expensive and it's like 65 bucks. Yeah. Um, so they're all pretty inexpensive and, and really good light options. And like the baton is super small. It's thousand lumens. Um, it's a hell of a light and it's also got the button on the side. Like you like, yep. Um, couldn't, can't go wrong with any of those three. I don't think. And everyone should have a Roby Vaughn on their car keys. Yeah, they're really good. I, I didn't, I specifically didn't pick anything from Olight cause I figured they were for sure going to come up um, in here, right? That's always kind of a weird part about these big yeah. shows. It's like, oh, I got to pick something. And it's like, wait a second. What do I think Tom's going to pick? What do I think Birch is going to pick? What's Sean going to pick? <laughs> right. Cause you're trying not to step on yeah. one another with it. And so I didn't, I didn't pick all like, cause I was sure they would come up. Like you said, so many great choices with those guys as well. Right. Cause they have a bunch of different battery chemistries and all yeah. kinds of stuff. And they're right, good, great, but bu- great budget lights, you know? Yeah. County Com is also good. If you have not checked out their lights, they're good. Yep. They're not going to be super high tech as far as like the lumens, but they're solid little double AA, A, triple A lights. And actually I bought two lights from there this time. I bought, they've got the new domed strobe double A, which is a really, I, they had a domed C cell light for quite a while and they were really cool. Um, I think one of my kids ended up with, I had an extra one for me. I got them all, uh, those two. Cause when you're camping, it's got this dome and it diffuses it. So you can like just set it on the butt and turn it on and it's like 300 lumens, but it'll light up your whole tent. They're really cool. Right. Right. Or hang it and from they, the peak of the tent or whatever. Yeah. And they discontinued it, but they just came out with the domed double A. So I grabbed one of those they are like 35 bucks for camping. It's like, it's like a lantern kind of, you know, absolutely. So I, I think they're pretty cool. Yeah. I have a couple of those double A Maritax stashed away somewhere, but I think probably still in those little blue bags because they ship them in like a, a little preventive bag, right? So that they don't start yeah. to patina until you take them out. But they definitely, those things will get a crazy cool patina once you carry them a little bit. Oh yeah. I've got the triple A and I think every material they made and the double A's and copper and aluminum or whatever they made them in. Yeah. Nice. So that's my lights. Used to cave a lot as a kid when I was a teenager or whatever. And uh, I, I used a lot of the, what is it, Ravio Hack or what are they called? The, oh, the, the plastic ones. With the 90 degree head? No, not the military. Uh, not Ravio Vac. That's not, that doesn't seem like. Rayo Vac is what you're thinking. Rayo Vac. With the big the, square battery? No, not just the regular ones that are just plastic and you, know, you can beat against the wall, but I can't imagine how cool it would be to do it now. It was like real lights and shit. Right. Do you remember uh, like back in the day, the, the cool waterproof lights were the techno lights? Yeah. Yeah. I've still got some of those. Those, those back in the day, those were pretty badass. Oh yeah. I really thought those were good. Mm-hmm. That's what helped Tom get old DeRay in the boat. 
Techno yeah. light. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and the hatchet. And the hatchet. Make the fires. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Six times out of ten, it gets him every time. <laughs> I think that that thing that you're heading down, Tom, is a really good, if your kids have any interest at all, even a tiny bit in outdoor stuff, like if they like the camping thing at all, I think, you know, my son went to school up at Michigan Tech, way up in the northern part of Michigan, kind of near Copper Harbor kind of area. Yeah. And so that area is obviously fantastic for all of that stuff. And one of the cool things about going up there was he always liked camping with his grandparents and, you know, we rode dirt bikes and he liked to snowboard and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, one of the things when we took him up there to visit, um, the school had tons of opportunity for kids to go do outdoor stuff because it's the, probably one of the best outdoor places right in the U S. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was really cool that they had like, they actually have like an area in the school there that in the main, um, you know, kind of like their main, one of their main common buildings that was like an outdoor outfitter. It was like a REI kind of place, but it was all stuff yeah. that kids could come check out with their ID. And the, well, for a lot of the stuff, there was a fee, but like you could get a frame pack and a tent and a sleeping bag and like a whole outdoor kit to go camp for like 10 bucks for a weekend kind of thing. Or you could go check out a kayak and pay a $5 fee or something, you know, like all that kind of stuff. And so he and his friends did a bunch of outdoor things. They went snowboarding. They went, they would always go, like you said, build a campfire. Um, you know, there's a, a high spot there that's way up high where you can see really, really far. They would go up there and hang out or they would go on Lake Superior and go build a campfire on the beach and hang out. And they loved doing yeah. all that stuff. I thought, I remember you telling me about that and I thought that was a really cool thing. Yeah. Um, it's a good thing to encourage. It's, it's safe, healthy, you know, I mean, it's, it's good. Well, and I, you know, one of the things that they kind of, um, talked about a lot there was it's really easy, especially when you're going for any kind of technical degree to get so deeply buried in your studies that you kind of, you know, burn out are like hold up in a room somewhere and you don't ever do anything else. And they said, we we see for sure that when the kids actually get out and do something and breathe a little bit of fresh air and blow off some steam, you know, where nobody's going to get hurt, nothing happens, whatever, then it's just better for them all around. And I, I love that whole approach and I thought it was really, really smart. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think anything we, we can do to encourage that with the kids is really a good thing. Oh, very much. I agree. Found that flashlight, by the way. Oh. It was called yeah. Dr. Optics. Oh, D-O-C-T-E-R? A Sphere Lux MIDI 125. Wow. It was a company that was under the Zeiss um, brand. Cool. I'm sending it link as we are. That Yeah, that was bothering me. Sorry. That's awesome. Michael, did, is it spelled D-O-C-T-O-R? Uh, D-O-C-T-E. ER, yeah, German company. Yeah, so you know, um, you know where else I've seen that name is um, if you look at a Trigicon ACOG, mm-hmm. there's a variant of those that uses like a little reflex, almost like a uh, oh gosh, like a little uh, red dot that sits on top of the rear optic, so that you have a red dot if you want to do if you need to do stuff up close, or you look at the. Uh, or you actually look through the magnification on the ACOG and it looks like one of those, oh, yeah. uh, a little tiny, um, gosh, what is that even called that it, it's a reflex site, right? It's like shaped like an L mm-hmm. it's got a little, um, lens yep. that sticks up and the thing comes from an angle and shows the dot. So that D O C T E R is the company that provided those to Trigicon before Trigicon was making their own stuff to fit on the back of the ACOG. Hmm. That's that's where I saw that name before, D O C T E R. It's all connected. It is. Oh, that thing is funky, man. It looks like a little oh. FM radio thing. Yeah, like a pack of cards. Yeah. That thing was I mean, as a kid, you know, in the nineties, I was like, holy shit, this thing's bright. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's probably like seventy lumens or something. Yeah. Doctor Spherolux MIDI one twenty five. Yeah, that's a trip. That's like super vintage. Uh, that's like an antique piece on eBay now. Mm-hmm. So uh, what else did you guys come up with that you need to send out with your kids? 
bonus category? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Bonus. Bonus category. Ding, ding, ding. All right. I'll start this one. Um, bonus category. So I think it was Michael that mentioned a toolkit. We did that with both our kids when they went away to college. I wasn't sure if Riley would use hers when I got it for her, but I got, I don't remember wh- who made the stuff, but it has like an Allen key set and a pair of pliers and a couple of screwdrivers and a uh, hammer. The Allen keys. Is it the DeWalt set? It might be Sean. Cause it's yellow and black. So it's DeWalt colors as for sure. Cause I just saw it this weekend when we helped her move and she still has that. She graduated almost a year ago she still has it. She still has all the tools, I think, which is really cool, much to my surprise. And yeah, that's like one of her key things, right? Oh, let me get the toolkit. It's like, oh, look mm-hmm. at you, girl. High five on all that. Um, so yeah, that, that that's something that for sure the kids use. Ryan still has his stuff, I think, from when he was in school. And I think it's something that comes in handy for them more frequently than they expect, right? Like it seems like one of those belt and suspenders thing, like when you help them build a it's up here in Michigan anyway, like a little winter kit that sits in a duffel bag in their trunk, right? With an emergency blanket and a shovel and all that shit. It's like, okay, roll our eyes. Here's parents being weird. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, suddenly one of their pals needs help with something and boom, they bust out the toolkit and they're on it. Yeah. Yep. So I, I didn't think of that Mark, but I actually sent something similar. Duluth trading has like a jumper cable bag. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, I did that. So it's got some basic tools and the jumper cables in there. Yep. See, I went jump pack. Ooh, jump pack is a great idea. 71 bucks on Amazon is a no-co. It's got like a 9,000 reviews. A uh, tiny, tiny thing. I had a jump pack like when they first came out and it was like a boom box, like a 90s boom box size. Yeah, they were huge. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but man, I, I don't know that put that shit in your car, put it in your kid's car. You know, you don't need to be waving someone down to be doing shit in this day and age. No. (laughs) The cool part is that the jump packs now, they're like, like you said, they're the size of a large battery bank. Like you'd carry if Mm -hmm. you went to travel. And, um, the fact that you can jump a car from some of those things is just bizarre, right? It speaks Mm -hmm. to the amount of energy stashed inside one of those. But, um, but yeah, they're, you could use it for all kinds of stuff, right? You, even if you couldn't get your car to start, you could charge your phone on it while you're waiting for help to come. And you know what I mean? All kinds of stuff. Yeah. No, jump pack's a great idea. Well, oddly enough, the, uh, Brian Glowicki, his, uh, yeah, his post about how, it, what he sent his kids off with the first aid that all had all like the thermometer and stuff like that is yeah. actually what made me think of this episode was his back to school, send them off thing. Right. Yeah, Brian is very creative when it comes to that stuff. He um, he's very thoughtful on the kind of stuff that he picks to put mm-hmm. in those little kits. And I it seems like he showed us the first the actual first aid kit that he sent his daughters off with, uh, maybe last year or something. And it was extensive, right? I mean, yeah, it was smart and not like a backpack full of stuff, right? Like a small bag full of stuff, but it was all really, really smart items to have. And um, we did that same thing with our kids with some kind of first aid slash care kit. And I think that's what this thing was that he most recently posted was, was it wasn't, you know, like gauze and, you know. Yeah. It wasn't a trauma kit. It yeah, was yeah. a, I'm sick away from home. You know, these are, you know, your thermometer, your uh, oxygen, you know, I did, which I didn't even know that they made a compact version. Of right. That. Right. He had a little fingertip pulse ox in there. That's like, affordable yeah, right? cool. <laughs> which is pretty cool i you know i think it's probably the current version that he showed us was almost like as much a covid kit as anything right mm-hmm. um but but you know amy had done stuff with that like that with the kids before where okay there was a first aid kit but then you know she had all kinds of stuff she put in there like you know ibuprofen and uh, just basic stuff that she knew the kids were going to end up wanting or needing or like if they were at home what would she have given them when they were at home you know, maybe with a little note in there or whatever, mom stuff, right? Very thoughtful kind of thing. And I think kids really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. What about you, Sean? Would you have as a, uh, like, do you have any kind of bonus category sort of stuff? Uh, no, man, I'm in the same boat as you. I'm a toolkit guy. And I actually uh, tried to keep it within the budget. And there's a 135-piece uh, Craftsman Mechanics tool set that you can get for $80. Oh, wow. And Nice. 
you couldn't give your kid too much better than that, sending them out as far as tools go. It covers a lot of ground. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. And then there's another set. It's the Craftsman Home Toolkit and Mechanics Toolkit, and it's 99 bucks. But you got some channel locks in there also and hammer and some extra screwdrivers and stuff, but you don't have the full array of sockets. Yeah. I think when I sent Riley off, I gave her that, like you said, it was probably a DeWalt toolkit, but there was something that it was missing that I thought she would need or that I thought would be helpful. And it might be, it might have been a set of those um, Nipex pliers the where they're kind of like channel locks, but they have a push button. Yeah. Where they can basically grab anything. I think it was John Frederick that showed us those or showed me those the first time I saw them on USN years ago. And man, those things are awesome. You can, you could do some crazy stuff with those, right? You could pry stuff. You could rip something open. You could turn a screw. You could do anything with a set of those. And I'm pretty sure I gave her a set of those. I, I didn't see those this week and I got to find out if she still have them or not. You update that kit. Well, they didn't fit in the box, right? That's the, the kits you're talking about from Craftsman, Sean. Are they, do they include like a plastic thing that this stuff snaps into? Oh yeah. A uh, closable, lockable hard case that yeah. encapsulates the entirety of the collection. That's the key, right? That, oh yeah. <laughs> and it like gives you a quick visual on what's not there. Oh yeah. I mean, I've got a similar kit that my dad gave me, oh gosh, 25 years ago. <laughs> And I mean, cause it's so compact and in one spot, I even still got my 10 millimeter socket. So yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say, nice. yeah. there's certain things that want to disappear, right. Or get broken or lost or forgot about. I, I know that's millimeter. like a joke that people say, but I think cause I've owned Toyotas for quite a bit. I have so many 10 millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, it's it has to be in the modern era. It used to be a half inch socket or a three eight socket that would always be the busted one in the box, right? But it's mm-hmm. a, it's a ten mil today, no doubt. Awesome. You know, another interesting thing um, that I put on my bonus item list. I actually bought a bunch of these not so long ago. Um, Tom Maringer has this. Uh, you know, his thing today is called the Shire Post Mint, and I, we've talked about Tom on the show before. Um, if mm-hmm. you Google Shire, like, uh, like from the Hobbit S H I R E Shire post mint, um, he makes all kinds of cool, funky, um, themed coins. That's kind of his thing. He, it, they're largely a coining kind of operation. And so they make coins from like the, oh, the George R. R. Martin books and from, you know, the, um, the Lord of the Rings books and a zillion other, um, kind of themes that they make these coins for and they make challenge coins. They make like decision coins like yes or no, or hell yeah, or hell no, or whatever. Right. They have all kinds of cool, fun stuff that they do. And I actually got some stuff for Riley from them a little while ago. Um, one of them was a, uh, I think he calls it an extremely lucky coin and it's like a big, thick, gosh, it's probably at least a quarter inch thick copper ring, um, with, clear resin stuff inside that like you, uh, you know, once it cures, it's like epoxy that's clear and, uh, it has like a four leaf clover inside and like a little, you know, industrial emerald and a little teeny tiny horseshoe charm kind of set in this clear epoxy. And so I gave it to Riley when she was going to take her LSAT test. And, um, I noticed on their site that they were doing this funky thing because of all this COVID stuff and, you know, even just germ phobic people and stuff, they were making these door hooks Mm. and there's a bunch of companies making these now, right out of plastic and all kinds of stuff. And so Tom and his crew, they're making these copper door hooks and they're like a thing where you can grab onto a door at the grocery store, or they actually will work on a door knob, which is kind of wild. I gave one to Amy and she's like, yup, works on my doorknob too. I'm like, wow, check that out. Um, so you don't have to like actually handle the doorknob or the door handle or, punch buttons on an ATM or whatever, you can use this hook thing. So it's a little bit on the big side for me for keychain, but she keeps it in her purse. And, um, you know, copper's got these antimicrobial properties and stuff. And so, you know, you got to clean it if you really are going to be serious about any kind of germ thing, but they're making these copper door hooks. I thought they were super cool and they were cheap. They were like five or seven bucks a piece or they were under 10 bucks a piece. Um, and now they're doing them where they're actually, formed out of this super thick copper strand where it's one giant round piece of copper, almost like copper rod 
they form it to shape, they smash the end so that it can take a split ring, and then it's actually got a coined in thing that says Shire Post Mint and then, you know, 0.999 copper on the other side. And um, I don't know, I thought they were really cool. And uh, they were selling them cheap enough to try to help encourage people to have them and use them. You know what I mean? So I bought a bunch of them and gave one to Amy, one to Riley, one to Ryan and his fiance. So pretty, pretty neat stuff. That's pretty cool. I, yeah. I've seen a That's ton cool. of the, uh, of the machine places, you know, selling the hooks that, you know, yep. touch stuff and some have like the rubber on the end, the touch door, you know, or uh, elevator buttons and stuff like that. Touch screens. Very cool. Yeah. Something different. I don't know. And I've, I, I thought it was cool. Amy really liked it. I gave it to her and she's like, oh man, I can go all the way to my office. I'd actually get my hands on a bunch of stuff that I got to use hand sanitizer for, which is still somehow hard to get. Um, mm -hmm. And dries the shit out of your skin. Yes. <laughs> Finds all my owies. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. In a heartbeat, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Five bucks a piece. I just pulled it up on their site. 99.9% .9 pure copper door opener keychain and yeah they shipped them right away and yeah they're cool looking nice very cool i remember like one thing that they always said and i'm sure the money now has gone up but you remember parents saying like always have a hundred dollar bill shoved in the back of your wallet yeah yep. that's always a good one to and it's probably like you probably got to keep five thousand or something now <laughs> inflation <laughs> All right, I, well it's different too now because back when I went to college, there wasn't really, he didn't have a debit card or whatever, no. you know? So my dad, I can remember him. He, he gave me a hundred dollars. He's like, put this in your wallet. Don't use it. It's for emergencies. And he's like, if you got it, when you come back at the end of the year, I'll give you another one. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of cool, but it, I always had it in case of an emergency. Yeah. You know, on there was a guy that I, that I think a bunch of us probably came across on USN I think his name was Frank. He ran a company called Sunshine Products. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, Cash Can. The Cash Can. I, they're still out there. And uh, I actually- I just bought some. Did you really? Mm -hmm. I, I set the kids up with that exact thing, Birch, the like emergency cash in one of those cash can things. Yep. And I'm like, look, this money was really hard to put in there. This is for emergency only. Do not take it out unless you really, no kidding, need it. Because you're going to have to put the new money back in. And it's a mm -hmm. pain. And- um. Yeah, I I gave this to them years ago, many years ago now, and they, I, I think Riley still has her. She might actually still have it on her keychain. It was probably actually still has the same money in it, which who knows if it actually is still in <laughs> paper form. It may be decayed by now. I don't even know, but both no, kids they have for a long time. They yeah. have O-rings, so it's solid. And they've got a bigger one that holds three bills because for me, you know, sometimes a hundred dollars is too much, right? You flash a hundred dollars, it gets you in more trouble than not. <laughs> right. So the three bill one is cool because you can put a hundred in there and then two twenties. So you've got, yep. you know, the twenties will get you out of some jams. Whereas, you know, if you don't need to flash the money, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you do it that way or like you said, Michael, you sash it somewhere in some hidden away place. Smart to have at least a little bit of cash on you. Mm -hmm. Good call. Mad money. I think my dad called that. Tom, Michael, Sean, any of you guys got any other bonus items you want to throw in there? I've got a couple. No. All right. Go, man. So um, if you're going to college, I mean, you're probably going to be writing now. You A lot more is probably going to be on lap, laptops and whatnot. But I think uh, some writing tools are pretty cool. And, and I've gifted these to my sons uh, when they went to school. But I really like the Retro 51 Tornado uh, pins. They're Yep. I think they're a great value. They're a solid pin. Um, you can use it defensively if you want, but they also look distinctive. So once again, that conversation and it's a quality thing that'll last them forever. Um, you get refills pretty cheap and they, they write really nice. So I think that's good. Um, if you can't afford the retro 51 and you really need to go budget, I like the pilot G2 gel pins. They, they worked really good when I was in school, uh, or, not when I was in school, but when I was working as a nurse. Yep. Yep. Um, and then, uh, mechanical pencils. I really like nice mechanical pencils. So, um, I really like the graph gear 1000 and the Rotring me mechanical pencils. Those two, oh, yeah. they're under 
the ro- the road rings under like 25 bucks and the graph gear is like eight bucks on Amazon really quality pencils. And those, I, I think those are really, it's nice to have nice tools when you're writing and stuff like that or designing. So good suggestions. I like those, the gel, those gel pens, those G2 gels, they're awesome. Yep. Right. Yeah. I mean, for the money. Yeah. I still Abby's. Do you? <laughs> I, um, one of the, I like gel pens anyway, but Papermate makes some that are really cool that are called Papermate Ink Joy pens. Oh yeah, yeah. So if you like the G two, check those out sometime, Tom. Papermate okay. Ink Joy, uh, they sell these gel pens. I actually got a set of them for Amy because they had them in like the whole rainbow of colors kind of thing, where they were like twenty different colors or whatever, so she could put them on greeting cards or do whatever. But one of the cool oh, yeah. parts is this: uh, as a lefty guy, is this Ink Joy ink doesn't want to smear. And um, so they write really easily. They make a nice, uh, you know, they flow really nice when you're writing and they don't want to smear. So you might want to look at those two birch as a fellow lefty paper uh, mate, ink joy. The lefty. Curse the lefty. Yeah, right. Just adding them to my cart. Yeah, the G2 ones, they'll smear. So they're not lefty friendly. Uh, yeah. I will say that. I think so these will if they're super that's fresh, cool. but in the normal kind of um, – lefty slightly claw shaped writing style you got to try pretty hard to smear one yeah i just threw some in the box the other pen i really like is the we buy these by the box by the dozen is these uniball sino s-i-g-n-o and uh uniball sino 207 and uh, these are like an ink that is supposed to be highly resistant to being washed away yeah for checks yeah so I originally bought them to write checks with, right? Because we actually had a family member who had that whole check washing thing happen mm-hmm. where they wiped the signature or the amount or whatever, or the, who it was written to with like some kind of chemical off the check and then reissued the check somehow. Um, so I got these and we've been using them for a long, long time and yeah, they just work really good. And somehow or another, I ended up buying these bold ones, which are great because when you write with it, the line is very wide, very easy to read. These will smear, unfortunately, as a lefty guy, but if you give them a couple minutes, they tighten up and they're good to go. But th- that's the two that I keep on my desk. Cause, Very cool. Yeah, gel pens are the business. Sorry to interrupt, Tom. Go on. No, that's that. Uh, anybody else have any pen recommendations or writing utensils? Man, I'm getting ready to order one of these graph gear pencils. I'm digging Yeah, them. graph gears are Dude. awesome. The point sevens I use in the shop all the time. So I get colored when I'm doing Kydex. I use colored uh, lead, and I keep five of five or six of them in the shop, and they're they're great. Now for design work, I use the point five, uh, and they're they're literally some of my favorite pencils to use for in the shop and design, and they're cheap. Yeah. Now when I'm sketching, I'm a point five guy, but I'm Me looking. Too. They got a point three. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get it. It. I, I figured you won't G2. like it. Just crack and pow, pow, it, it constantly just, breaking. Yeah, it breaks and it wants to cut the paper. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah, depending oh. on how you sketch or draw or write, especially if you're writing characters, I tend to rip the paper with the point three, like Tom said. Yeah, and there it's hard to get lead, and there's not the selection, so a lot of the leads are really hard, too. So point five is a sweet spot, I think. That's been my experience. For Kydex, 0.7. Now, they make a 0.9. Don't get that. The lead sucks for the 0.9s. It's just not good. I saw they make it up to a full two millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like the fucking drafting kindergarten pencil? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I think you... you Sharpen it. Sharpen it, yeah. Either like to a chisel shape or to a cone. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Michael, were you saying something about a pencil? Uh, no, I was going to say, I feel really dumb that I, you know, we did it back to school and pencils, uh, pens <laughs> did not even enter my thought process. <laughs> that's funny. I'm, yeah, I'm not a, That's assumed. Yeah. My, well, my, my penmanship is so horrible that I don't even, I don't think of good pens or whatever or stuff because it's just like, it's a waste. It's wasted on me. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I was just trying to find a uh, man. I made a big post about these after someone recommended to me some really cool pencil. Oh, I know what it is. The Uniball Kuru Toga. K U R U T O G A. 
the Kuru that Toga. Right here. Yeah, those things are the best, man. The, it spins the lead so you don't get, like, it doesn't wear on one side. Exactly. They, they work really good. Well, that's the weird part about fine work. Like, Sean was thinking about the point three, right? Because you can... You, 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 I don't know. It feels like you can be more accurate if you can make a very, th- very, very, very thin line. And, um, that Kuru Toga has got like a weird shock absorber thing built in. Yeah. So as you release the pressure on the lead and then apply pressure on the lead again, it actually rotates the, the, uh, graphite the cylinder. Lead. Yeah. The lead in the pencil, it turns it. So as you write, it constantly rotates the pencil. Cause I remember in drafting and architecture, in the Mesozoic or era or whatever, when I was in high school, you always had to be careful to rotate the pen when you used it. Otherwise you'd get thick lines and thin lines, even though you had a 0.5 pen, pen pencil, I'm sorry, I keep saying pen, yep. I mean pencil. Um, you had to rotate the pencil to keep a uniform width and the Kuru Toga does that for you, which I thought was just a super fun concept. So there's seven bucks or something, right? They're cheap. I think you might even They're be able cheap. to get them at the regular store now. But I, when I started yeah. using them, they were like a special order thing from Japan or something weird. Oh, dude, six seventy seven on Prime. Yeah, I li- I personally like the Graph Gear better, the feel. But I do have the Kura Toga or whatever right here that I'm using. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, the body on the Graph Gear looks fantastic. I love the knurling down toward the bottom where you actually contact. Well, the the thing I like the best about the graph gear is the very fine tip. It retracts, so you don't bend it. Like right. when you nice. when you're done, totally done, and, and you retract all the lead, that that little metal tip actually retracts too. Yeah, that's cool. Shit, yeah. They uh, at some point they had a, they had a metal version of the Kuru Toga. I don't. I think it was called the Roulette or something. Um, mm-hmm. So I have a couple of those around here somewhere or another. Nice. And I like that because, like you said, you could get more of that knurling kind of um, something has about a, a better feel, a weight. Yeah. Something cool about a metal bodied pen or pencil that is awesome. And the rotring also retracts the little fine metal point, which I've had a lot of pencils that I've bent that, you know, in the pack or whatever. Yep. So those two I really like because they retract. Uh, you know, truthfully, I guess I was wrong on, on my, uh, how I have quality pens. Cause I completely forgot about this, uh, this pen that Francisco gave me at Blade last year. You may not have heard of it. It's called Extreme with an X. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's got a, a level. It's oh, got, uh, yeah. measuring, you know, it's got, uh, eyeglass, uh, screwdriver at the back end. Yep. Yep. And a touchscreen sensitive rubber tip. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it's a do I'm everything sort of, pen. I guess I'm sort of a pen aficionado. Right. Didn't, didn't realize it. There you go. Yep. Did you guys come up with anything else? No, I think our kids are good. <laughs> well, I got one more. All right. Oh, oh, shit. Well, I mean, if you're sending them back to school, they need a bag to put their stuff in. Oh, here we go. Backpack episode. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I mean, you got to have a bag so I, yeah going yeah. back to school i mean i've got two good two good suggestions i think all right um one is right in the price range and one is right above uh mountain smith makes a pack called the clear creek 25 and it's it's a decent sized pack so you can throw your books in there and your laptop and all that um and it's a good day pack when you're going out on day hikes or whatever too and it's pretty nice pack it's a hundred bucks and uh i found mountain smith to be a good value for the last 30 years i've been using a lot of mountain smith bags um the one that's just over is the mystery ranch and i say just over it's 165 um i think it's a better choice it's it's better built um and it's got a padded laptop sleeve and it's the Urban Assault 24. And it, you can get it in some bright colors like red or blue or green, which is cool. And I really like the Mystery Ranch stuff. They're, I think they're bomb proof. And they're, I've had some stuff get torn up. Uh, and they've got a repair place that fixed stuff really quick and nice and no charge. So they're good oh, people, nice. good company. That Urban Assault 24 is a sweet pack. Are they waterproof? Um, I don't know on this one. I know they've got the waterproof zippers on there and it's Cordura, mm-hmm. I think. So you could probably seal it if it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's probably, I'm, I'm looking at the features. 
I would guess it's water resistant. Yeah. But yeah, I've got, I've got probably three or four of the mystery ranch packs and can't say enough good stuff about them. Nice. Good call on a pack. I didn't even think about that either. Yeah. Shit. I, um, you know, a bunch of years ago, I bought secondhand from Justin Laffer. I bought a tactical tailor pack called an urban right. operator and mm-hmm. it, it looks like they renamed it and maybe changed it a little bit. They weren't very expensive back in the day. They were surprisingly cheap, but it's like, it's basically like a Jansport backpack. That's what it looks like. And it has some good, you know, typical organization stuff and other things. It has a padded laptop sleeve. It's got the little, um, drawstring kind of pouches on the side for a water bottle or whatever. I used one for a long time for work and I got one from Justin that I gave to my son who now is uh, just turned 30 and (laughs) I gave it to him when he went away to college. Justin had already used it and I figured Ryan was going to destroy it, right? Because that's what happens, right? Somehow packs get destroyed when you haul way too much stuff in them every single day. And um, Ryan still has that bag. And I remember him telling me a year or two ago that he broke the zipper because he was using it for work, right? He's long since graduated from school and he's been working, right? He's 30 years old. I said, do you still have that urban operator pack, that tactical tailor bag? And he goes, uh, yeah, but the zipper, like the zipper ripped out of the body or the zipper failed or something. And I remember telling him then, Hey, call them, right? They're like us company, call them and Mm -hmm. might be surprised. They might repair it for you. And I bugged him again when we were during this quarantine time this year. Hey, did you ever send that bag back? Because for some reason it came to mind. He's like, no, I never did. It's, you know, this thing's 10 years old or more, right? It, they're not going to do anything with it. And I'm like, no, no, no. You you got time right now, right? You're at home. Send them an right. email and see what's up. And he reached out to them. They said, ship it back. He shipped it back to them. They sent it back to him. He didn't charge him for the repair. And now the thing's back in action. It's his work bag again. Oh yeah. Nice. So like for, you know, a US made quality thing lasts a long damn time, right? They fixed it under warranty 10 years later, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. Um that's awesome. Yeah. I definitely if you can stay in the US with some of these companies like Mystery Ranch or Tactical Taylor, um yeah, it's just nice. They take care of you. It's a little extra money, but well spent. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, this thing's in the $200 range these days, but they're great packs. They're good people. You got to support that, right? So, Oh, yeah. That was a fun episode. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Well, if you choose to follow any of our picks, especially the ones that include a blade, be sure to check your your, uh, school or university's policies on what that stuff are. They seem to be kind of varying based on a little bit of research that I did. Um, Most places... At least in Michigan, if it's under a three-inch blade, it's not considered a weapon and it's not a problem to have in your pocket. But depending on where you live or what the school is or what their policy is on all that stuff, it might be different. So yeah, definitely do your homework. You don't want to get anybody in trouble. Well, and Like I said, we, we tried to pick items that were unobtrusive. And if they stay in your pocket, nobody knows. Right. Yep. As long as you don't yeah. go out causing a ruckus with your medium stockman you'll be good mm-hmm. yeah right <laughs> waving around papa's knife like sean said all right well um hope you guys like this one let us know what your picks are in these same categories i'm sure there's a million other choices uh for under 100 bucks on these things we'd be very interested to hear what you guys have to say because i think we all ended up shopping a little bit <laughs> going through oh, this yeah. list i know i got a pair of three lightweight on the way and i know you guys got some stuff that made you want to buy as well um, so let us know what your suggestions would be for the same kind of categories. Cause I think, um, uh, or if even, especially the bonus category, right. There's some, some ideas there that I think are helpful for people and really nice for, um, your kids or friends or neighbor's kids or whatever that I think they'll sometimes find using more than they would have ever expected. Oh yeah. Uh, I think that's it. Like we talked earlier in the episode, throw those Blade Show memories out there. I think that's a really fun thing. It's a nice way to uh, support the Blade Show people with what they're doing and kind of trying to figure out how this thing looks moving forward. And uh, for those of you who have been to Blade Show, I'm sure you have some fun memories that uh, 
maybe some that you can't share on Instagram, but, but maybe some that you can, um, like I said, even if you met your favorite knife maker or hero person or whatever, let her rip, mm-hmm. and, uh, show them some Very love. Cool. And as always, thanks to our Patreon people uh, for supporting us and helping us keep rolling with this thing. Uh, we are working. We say this every time we've, uh, this must be the 15th time we said we're working on the Moran episode, but, uh, Mr. Kendrick may have come up with a very cool option for us to help, uh, paint the Moran picture a little clearer. So we're trying to get that sorted out and, um, hopefully we can get something on that recorded and out to you sometime soon. Again, we appreciate all your help. Couldn't do it without you, whether it's just talking to us or supporting us uh, with a couple of bucks through Patreon. Either way, we, we appreciate everyone's help and attention. Very much. Yeah, you guys make this possible. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, really appreciate it. All right. That's it for uh, episode 48. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, all. Take care, folks. Thanks, guys. <laughs>